As the dog days roll on, it is the Phillies' offense which has again taken on the look of a tiger. A week-long road trip filled with a long ball barrage, but a team which lost just as many as it won. It is the pitching which must step forward, as tonight, Kurt Schilling makes his fourth attempt at his tenth victory. The Montreal Expos are in town and need a sweep to remain on the fringes of the pennant race, head-to-head -head with the Phillies next. Is there any pennant significance left in the Expo season? We'll find out next. Hi again, everybody. I'm Larry Rose, and welcome tonight to Phillies Baseball exclusively on PRISM, the first of three against the third-place Expos, who are 10 games out and in need of a sweep to get back in the hunt. They're the speediest team in baseball, so Darren Dalton should be a busy man behind home plate. In terms of the pitching matchup, Kurt Schilling, looking for win number 10, leads the Phillies in starts, innings pitched, and runs allowed. Against Chris Napoles, who's pitched very well lately, his problem, he's got as many walks as strikeouts. And stay with us coming up in a moment with their thoughts on tonight's game. Jay Johnstone, Chris Wheeler, right after this. Columbia Pictures would like to take you out to the ball game for an all-star comedy. They'll pay you $75 a week. We only make 30 at the dairy. Well, then, this would be more, wouldn't it? See how it works is the train moves, not the station. <laughs> There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. My uniform bursts open, and oops, my bosoms come flying out. You think there are men in this country who ain't seen your bosoms? A league of their own. The Phillies, the Expos, it's National League Baseball at its best. Live from the vet, Wednesday night at 7.30, exclusively on Prism, the home game home of the Phillies. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Veterans Stadium. Chris Wheeler with Jay Johnstone, the Phillies and the Montreal Expos tonight. And, Jay, just before we went on the air tonight, the Phillies made a deal. Yes, a very good deal. They traded Jose DeLeon and some cash to the Chicago White Sox for reliever Bobby Thickman. Bobby Thigpen, a guy you saw in the American League when you were working over there. What kind of pitcher is he? Well, he's a sinker ball slider type pitcher. He was a closer in the years that I saw him. In fact, coming into this year, he had recorded 200 saves his best year in 1990, where he had 57 saves. But in 91, he had 30. Last year, 22. So he knows how to shut the door. This year, I think the White Sox were primarily using him as a setup man. But, you know, what this is for us, for the Phillies, it's more insurance as we get closer towards the pennant. Phillies adding some depth to their bullpen with that move. The Montreal Expos are here, a team in third place in the National League East. Is this a big series for them? Well, it better be because they're way behind and they really need to sweep uh, the Phillies. They have nothing to lose. Uh, they're going with Knob Holtz. Knob Holtz, a very hot pitcher as of late, is pitching very well. They sent him out. He got his head together, got his mechanics together. He's got good control of his fastball now, and according to the uh, Expos, is pitching very, very well. And the Montreal Expos have one great defensive outfield. They're a lot of fun to watch. And we'll be back with the starting lineups coming up right after this. Phillies baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Fresh, pure, natural. Proud to be your bud. By Sherwin and Williams Paint Stores. The pros know Ask Sherwin-Williams, a participating sponsor of Major League Baseball. By Mellon PSFS, the official bank of the Phillies. By Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages, no other book can match it, a Bell Atlantic company. By Texaco, save up to $5 by joining Texaco's frequent Bueller Club. Visit your local participating Texaco location for all the details. Texaco star of the American road. By Coca-Cola, Phillies baseball and Coca-Cola, always a hit, always Coca-Cola. By Cento Fine Italian Foods, the company that says trust your family with our family. By Pizza Hut, call Pizza Hut Delivery now and have your pizza by the fourth inning. By Jiffy Lube, America's favorite oil change. 
And by Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield Personal Choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. We thought we'd been everywhere, seen everything. We were wrong. Put that to the bone. Put that to the bone. These guys were weird, and we liked it. Later, they took us to the Tower of Bud. Brother, tomorrow we ride again. Yeah, you were right, Judd. There's no beach traffic. Easy. I went out. There's a Coke machine. Man, I'm so hot. You certainly are. Hot as in sweaty. Hey, okay, so crank on the AC. Air conditioning is for the week, like yourself. I'm sticking to the seat, like yourself. That Please dog is don't. moving faster than we are. Uh, all you guys ever do is complain. Your shoes are pretty. Could someone please fan me? No. Coca-Cola, anyone? Yeah. All right. Thank That's you, fun. Alan, for serving a purpose in my life for the first time. Well, You're very welcome. Time together. And back at Veteran Stadium, Chris Wheeler with Jay Johnstone. Time now for your Sherwin-Williams starting lineup for the Montreal Expos, managed by Felipe Alou, Delian Solano de Shields at second base, Mike Lansing is the shortstop, Marquise Grissom in center field, Larry Walker, the right fielder, Moises Alou in left field will bat fifth, Darren Fletcher catches and hits sixth, Sean Berry is the third baseman, he will bat seventh, Derek White out of their minor league system will bat eighth and play first base on the mound of Pottsville, Pennsylvania resident, Chris Nabholz will pitch and bat ninth. Man, for the first place, Phillies, Holland, Stocker, Dunker, and Crook on the infield. In the outfield, in Cavillia, Dykstra, and Chamberlain. Behind the plate, Darren Dalton. And on the mound, one of the Twin Towers, Kurt Schilling. And here is Schilling, 6'4", 215 pounder. Schill now 26 years of age. He was selected number two by the Red Sox in January of 1986. This year, you see the numbers on him against the Montreal Expos lifetime. Schilling is four and three in 12 games with an earned run average of 3.91. He has been pitching very well lately, but in his last four games, he is one and oh with three no decisions, but a good earned run average of 3.10. Schilling started to turn his season back in that game. He pitched at San Diego on the road trip the Phillies had out to California. The umpires for the game tonight at home plate is Gary Darling. Kerwin Danley is at first base. Joe West at second, and the crew chief, Frank Pulley, is at third base. The last 50 Shields will lead it off for the Montreal Expos. Third to lead in stolen bases with 34 of them, having another good offensive year. Andy Shields takes strike one call from Schilling. Delano is batting at a 359 clip in his last 37 games, scoring lots of runs. He walked four times in a game here earlier this year, but Schilling comes out for strike one and strike two to him. Expos come into play tonight in third place in the National League East. Ten games behind the Phillies. They are eight over 500. Played very well at home and not so hot on the road. One of the big things, Chris, that Philippe Alou, manager of the Expos, and we see him right there, has emphasized to his young players is be more patient at the plate. Especially to this man hitting the Shields. He wants them to take a few pitches to try and gain some walks. He has recently. Fastball grounded to Stocker who has it. Throws out the fleet to Lino to Shields. One out here in the first inning. You can remember we saw him a while back. They were swinging at almost the first pitch every guy. And that'll bring up Mike Lansing, the shortstop. Lansing is a natural shortstop. He's played quite a bit of third base. The Expos have a ball club where they are really set in their outfield, but they are floundering around in the infield except for the Shields. They, uh, they're kind of mixing and matching and trying to make some combinations work, and it really hasn't worked out for them this year as far as the infield goes. Fastball right over to Lansing, batting at 276 with three homers and 31 runs about it. They just signed Randy Reddy today, the former Phil, who came off the Rochester roster, and they sent Frank Bullock back to AAA. 
Well, a rookie shortstop, Cordero, had made 27 errors so far already this season. And like you said, they're a little unhappy with the situation out there and the way he played. So a lot of different guys are getting a chance to play shortstop for this game. Breaking ball hammered to third. Hollins, who played really well on the last trip defensively, throws him out. Dave down in Atlanta and also in Miami was excellent. And he comes up with a good play here in the first inning. One of the big reasons Hollins is playing better now is the fact he's getting more flexibility in his wrist. We know that he had the surgery on that hand. And he'll be the first one to tell you that he was horse doo-doo when he was playing a while back. He just didn't have the flexibility to make the good throws and consequently made a lot of errors, took a lot of heat. But as he said today, I'm getting more flexibility back in that hand each day. And that's why I'm playing better. One of the fine offensive players in baseball, Marquise Grissom, who just wears out Kurt Schilling. Here you see the numbers on Marquise Grissom lifetime against Schilling is 13 for 23, 565. And he's had three three hit games out of his last four. And he's hitting over a 400 clip in his last six games. So he has been very, very hot. Ooh, one way to stop that. <laughs> oh two <laughs> comes inside on him one and, or two and one. Excuse you catch me. my drift. Oh yeah. I used to do it that way. We're referring some pitchers that we saw back in the early years, folks, would uh, not waste any pitches. They just drill them. Especially if he's hitting 500 again. Yeah, I would think so. Uh, Bob Gibson, Don Drysdale, Stan Williams. Marquise Grissom, one of the premier center fielders in the league. There's a deal the Phillies made just prior to the game. It was announced at 720 as they've traded Jose De Leon, one of the really good guys on this ball club, and everybody will miss him as he was traded for Bobby Thinkpen. Grounded up the middle and through for a base hit, and Grissom just keeps it up against Kurt Schilling. He just always seems to find a hole. I got to tell you, that pitch was an outstanding pitch made by Schilling. We'll, sh we'll show you the location. Watch where this pitch is by Schilling. It's a breaking ball that was going down below the strike zone, and Grissom went down and got it, and Stocker had pulled over a little bit towards the hole to play him to pull, and he hit it just out of his reach. And that'll bring up Larry Walker, who has tied his career high for the third time with a 10-game hitting streak, batting at 281. Overall, the native Canadian swings and misses. Walker's hit Schilling at a 278 clip. Everybody has commented on how good an offensive year Walker has, but people tend to forget he's a very fine outfield. He's got a good, strong arm. He has a lot of assists this year. Fouled away. And yeah, until Witten came along, he probably had the best, most accurate arm in the National League from right field. I think Witten might be a little bit a little better. A little stronger of an arm, but you're right, as we see the third base coach going right through the signs. That's uh, Jerry Manuel. No, I was just trying to tell what the sign was there. Oh. <laughs> trying to trying to read him here. We know it's Jerry Manuel. Just uh, you got uh, you got two outs. You got the count now. One and two. There's the first base coach. It's that Lewis Pujols, mm -hmm. who was with the Houston, Houston Astros, Astros in the, in the 80 years. League yep. Championship Series. A ball and two strikes now on Larry Walker. In the dirt, a good block by Dalton. Grissom, who loves to run, Marquise has 28 stolen bases. He's eighth in the league with those 28 steals. Nice block by Dalton. You can see him keep the ball in front of him. And then before he took off the mask, he looked up to see if Grissom was doing anything. Well, the Expos are the team in the league that can intimidate you with their speed. Walker swings and fouls it off. They have stolen 158 bases. Cincinnati Reds, to give you some idea, are second in the league with just 108. So nobody runs in this league like Montreal does. First five hitters in their lineup in double figures and stolen bases. Oh. Wow. Pretty close there. Gary Darling says no. So Kruk is going to play off Grissom now. He'll be off in the pitch. Three balls, two strikes, two outs here in the first inning. With Moises Alou on deck. Here you see Kruk backing off.
Walker grounds it towards second. Duncan on two big hops. Throws out Larry Walker. Schilling has a strong first inning. No runs a hit. No errors in one left. To the bottom of the first. No score. Do you want your car done right? If you want your car done right, bring it to a place that puts its money where its mouth is. Bring it to Jiffy Lube, where millions of cars every year are covered by our pledge of satisfaction. Everybody says they'll do the job right, but at Jiffy Lube, we guarantee it. One more reason, Jiffy Lube is America's favorite oil change. We got experience at Jiffy Lube. Get it, Don. I'm part of this. If you were worried that the world was being taken over by rabid status seekers willing to pay any amount to outsnoot the snootiest, here's some heartening news. The classically designed Acura Legend sedan is the best-selling luxury import in America. Oh, and more good news. Poodle evening wear sales are down. Lease a Legend for $3.99 a month. See your Acura dealer for details. The Phillies, the Expos, it's National League Baseball at its best. Live from the vet, Wednesday night at 7.30, exclusively on Prism. The home game home of the Phillies. Well, let's check your Sherwin-Williams starting lineup tonight for the Phillies, managed by Jim Fergosi, Lenny Dykstra in center field, Mariano Duncan at second, John Crock, the first baseman, Dave Hollins at third, Darren Dalton catches Pete Incavilia in left field, West Chamberlain in right field will bat seven, Kevin Stocker is the shortstop, he bats eight, and on the mound, Kurt Schilling. And for Philippe Lou's Expos on the defense, John Barry at third, Mike Lansing is short, Delano DeShields at second, Derek White at first. In the outfield, Moises Alou in left, Marquis Grissom in center, and Larry Walker in right. Darren Fletcher will be behind the plate, and the left-hander from Pottsville, 29-year-old Chris Nabholtz. There are the numbers on Nabholtz. He's 6 foot 5, 212 pounds. He was a number two pick of the Expos in June of 1988. One start against the Phillies this year, and they blew him out of an inning in two thirds as he gave up three hits, four earned runs, three walks, and three strikeouts. Lenny, Lenny Dykstra has always said to him, Nabholz is one of the toughest left handers in the league against him, and the numbers prove it as Lenny is one for 15 off Nabholz's lifetime. Misses inside. The Nabholz we saw earlier in the year, Jay, was wild. They sent him out. Since he's come back, he's pitched very well as we look at Dykstra here. Well, he has. The, the problem he had before was mechanics and trouble with his fastball, being able to put it in the spots and location that he wanted. Since he's been back, he's pitched very well. He's pitched into the eighth inning, and I believe five of his last eight games, as we see the National League run leaders right there with Dykstra on top. Plenty with a career high and walks 93 of them. He leads the majors in runs scored with 103. He has just been an offensive machine for about three months. Getting on base at a pace that I haven't seen around here in a long, long time and might not see again. Three and one to Dykstra. Navholtz gets it over. He was way off on the first three pitches and has thrown two perfect strikes. In his last outing here at the vet, he had good movement on his fastball, but he couldn't control it. The kid's only 26 years old, so he's still got a lot of learning to do, but still, if he could control his fastball, get it in the strike zone, he's got two good other pitches, a curve and a change as Dykstra takes this running fastball inside. Walk number 94 for Lenny Dykstra leads the league in that category. Nabholz has 58 strikeouts on the year. That was walk number 54. So as we mentioned earlier, the walks really hurt him, especially early on. He's been better since he's come back from that stint at AAA. At Ottawa, he pitched in four games. He was one and one there with a 5.16, including a combined no-hitter. Mariano Duncan stands in at 273. Mariano has a seven-game hitting streak working. And Duncan takes low ball one. Duncan. Lifetime against Navholtz, a 304 lifetime batter. On deck is Crook. Duncan's hit 303 in this seven game streak. He hit the ball well in the trip to Atlanta and Florida. 
as the Phillies did basically as a team. Nabholtz throws over to first a lot. He does not have a good move. He's fairly slow to the plate, but he will make quite a few moves over. I think maybe that because he's got such a high leg kick that they might try and teach him that slide step pitch to get a little quicker to home plate, give his catcher a chance to throw out some opposing base deals. Looked as if Duncan gave Dykstra a chance to mm -hmm. run there, took a fastball over. One ball and one strike. As Darren Fletcher takes a look into the dugout. The thing about Duncan in this situation is he loves to hit the ball the other way with runners at first base. He's got a gigantic hole over there between first and second. Duncan fouls it off. Happy birthday tonight to Ruth Nerons from her daughter Karen, who works in the Phillies executive dining room, and also to Kathy Donovan. From Dr. Rich Vasallo's office up at Nazareth Hospital. Got a note from her call from her sister Eileen today that it's Kathy's birthday. So happy birthday as we check out Montreal's dugout. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about your birthday? Huh? <laughs> That's over. Well, no, 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 it's not. It's tell the folks it's your birthday. Swing and a miss by Mariano Duncan as Navholtz throws a good fastball by him. Strikeout number one for Navholtz. Phillies have to be careful this pitch. Watch this pitch run out of the strike zone. Good running fastball. Duncan went after. The ball is up. You got to lay off that pitch. What are you, uh, 39 now, right? My birthday was yesterday. I'm 48, and that's the end of it. And it was nice that it wasn't, wasn't on the air yesterday. That's why I hope I could sneak by. No chance. Cruck the batter as Navholtz moves over to first again. Kruk leading the league in on-base percentage, second in hitting with his 347 average. He has 88 walks. There goes Dykstra. Fletcher's throw, he got it. Dykstra is caught stealing on a good throw by Darren Fletcher. Caught stealing 2-6 as Dykstra is thrown out. Dykstra looked like he had a pretty good job. We'll let you be the judge out there and the umpire. There's Dykstra's hand going in. And his hand beat the ball. Not according to Joe West. Huh. Well, there's his hand on the bag. And as you can see, the hand was already on the bag and the, the tag was applied to the back of the elbow. Maybe Joe ought to get a little closer to the bag. Caught stealing number eight on the year for Lenny Dykstra. Two outs and nobody on base. And no score here in the first inning. Cruck takes it over. Navels is throwing a lot better than he did in that game here earlier when he was very, very wild. He gave Fletcher a good pitch to throw on, too, a high pitch. One and two to Cruck. Fly ball center field. Marquise Grissom waits. Squeezes it. Pills are going to the first. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Through one, no score. Any professional painter will tell you that if you want results like these, you got to know the tricks of the trade. You got to ask Sherwin Williams. Now, these are guys you can trust. They've got good paint, good price, good advice, guaranteed. Want to know something? I didn't paint this house. The guy that lives there did. Hey, fella, nice job. This guy knows what the pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams. Why will some people only use Texaco System 3 gasolines? I'll tell you the first reason. My dad said System 3 cleaned out his intake things and his fuel inspectors. Second reason. My dads keep saying get good grades. So we come here. The reasons I come here Every grade of Texaco System 3 performs in cars both new and old. They do? Well, no wonder we're getting the horsepower we should be getting. Count on System 3 for performance in your car. These things are... I mean, where do I start? There are lots of ways to have fun at a baseball game besides the game. Now, the game. The Phillies give Colorado a Rocky Mountain low Monday, August 23rd, and Tuesday, the 24th at 7.35, and Wednesday, the 25th at 1235 in a business person special. Then Cincinnati turns red Friday, August 27th at 7.35, Saturday, the 28th at 7.05, and Sunday, the 29th at 1.35, when kids get a baseball jacket free. Call 463-1000. 
Hey, if you like Italian food, you're going to love Gento. And they're rooting for the Phillies this season by donating $200 for every Philadelphia Phillies home run. They give it to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Clinic. You know, Gento has over 100 fine Italian food products. And all you have to do is go to your grocery store, look up on the shelf where it says Italian food, and you'll see all kinds of Gento products. 115 home runs hit by the Phillies this year, a league leading total, so lots of money donated by Cento to the Philadelphia Child Guidance Center. Here is Moises Alou, the manager's son. Lines it to right, slicing away from Chamberlain, and he can't get it. Goes past him to the wall. Alou can run. He's going to go for three. And he overthrows the cutoff man, so he'll have a triple. Alou with his fourth triple of the year as Chamberlain misplayed it and then overthrew the cutoff man. Well, that's not exactly a good way to start out your defensive night. He tried to make a shoestring catch. If you're going to do that, you better dive and knock it down. But then the one thing you have to do is after you miss the ball and you retrieve it, you've got to hit your infield. And the throw went over both of the Phillies infielders head and it allowed Alou to get to third base. And whether or not they had a chance to throw Alou out, but watch the throw here over both of the cutoff men's head. You can't do that. Got to hit the cutoff man. Darren Fletcher, the batter. Phillies will play the infield back. Fletcher, the former Dodger, former Philly, has been the regular catcher for the last, well, basically 29 games. He started 27 of them since July the 6th. Had a seven-game hitting streak at one point. Now you see the infield all the way back, conceding a run on a ground out, and he pops it up over our heads into the upper deck. Fletcher, and on deck is right-handed batting third baseman Sean Berry. So Schilling in trouble. Second hit of the ball game given up by Kurt. Here is Barry. Schilling, as you see, working from the windup. Schilling 1 0 against the Expos this year in two games with a 3.60 earned run average. There are Fletcher's. Last 32 games, as I mentioned, he's caught 27 out of the last 29. Pops it foul first base side near the stands. Crock and Chamberlain run out of room. Happy birthday tonight to Kathy Schmidt. It's a belated birthday. We just got a note from her the other day that we found when we got back from the trip. Kathy used to handle public relations for Prism and Sports Channel. So happy birthday to Kathy. And a Sylvia Bacco of Norwood, PA. That's another belated birthday. Happy birthday, Sylvia. We've got a lot of birthdays tonight, don't we? A lot of August birthdays. We get to yours later. <laughs> well, that one that stack is. Wow, Rounded to first, and they're going to pick up a run, are the Expos. Fletcher is now 1 for 0 oh for 19 lifetime off Kurt Schilling, but picks up an RBI, his second off Schilling. And for Fletcher, that is RBI number 38 on the year. A lose scores. It's one nothing Expos. Well, let's get the job done with the infield back. All you have to do is hit the ball on the ground. You've got an RBI and you give your team a lead, and that's exactly what Fletcher did. Sean Berry, the batter, playing at third base. Berry's hit pretty well against the Phillies this year. Has a couple of homers. Now you see his overall numbers. Played the American League last year. Barry starting his 44th game at third base. Lansing has started the most at third for them, 59. Lansing playing shortstop tonight because of Cordero having some problems. Two and one to Sean Barry. The on deck batter is Derek White, who has moved in now to play first for the Expos. They have been through a bunch of first basemen this year. There is White out of the farm system. Off the end of the bat, squirted foul, first base side. Last year in Omaha, hit 21 home runs, so it looks like this kid's got some sock. Homered off Schilling earlier this year. Up at Montreal, also hit a home run off Mulholland here at the vet. Outside, hit that as a pinch hitter. Three balls and two strikes now on Sean Berry.
Full count pitch on the way. A high fastball. Swing and a foul tip held on to by Darren Dalton. Strikeout number one for Schilling. Schilling going right after him. You can see this pitch here with a high fastball. Schilling has a tendency when he's got a guy swinging at pitches that are borderline. He'll go right up the ladder with him. And this is what he did with Barry. Kurt Schilling was with his 111 strikeout, tying him for the league or the team lead with Tommy Green, and also putting him into the top 10 in strikeouts in the league. As we look at Jim Fergosi, strikeout leader in the National League is Jose Rijo. Good fastball on the inside corner. Derek White at Ottawa this year, that's the Triple A club, hit 281 with four homers and 29 runs batted. And you see the number two pick in June of 1990 for the Expos who have a very, very fertile farm system. Broken back ground ball to Duncan throws him out. And the Expos pick up a cheap run in that inning on, on a defensive lapse. One run, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. One nothing Montreal. This Dodge Dakota Sport comes with the Magnum V6, automatic, rear anti-lock brakes, and a price under 11.5. Setting your choice of trucks down to one, Dodge. So don't miss the 93 model clearance now at your nearest Dodge dealer. Now save up to 13.57 on Dodge Caravans, including air conditioning at no extra charge. So cut yourself in for great savings at the 93 model clearance now at your nearest Dodge dealer. Bert sells balloons. Bob sells balloons. Bert sells wacky gifts. Bob sells wacky gifts. Bert delivers. Bob delivers. So if Bob's got everything Bert's got, why Bert busy and Bob not? Now do you suppose Bert's got a big color ad in the book 9 out of 10 people use? The genuine Bell of Pennsylvania Yellow Pages. 9 out of 10 use it. No other book can match it. The Bell of Latin Company. I can get in 72 hours. I wouldn't trust my car past the city limits. For the way you travel today more than ever, the smart money is on budget. Ask for budget smart rates for great prices on cars that won't craft your style, all with unlimited mileage. The smart money is on budget. It's the last business person special of the year. Wednesday, August 25th at 1235. The Phillies play the Rockies and all fans get a handsome poster featuring all the Phillies pitchers compliments of Mellon PSFS. Call 463-1000 now. Don't forget Dream Week, one of the great times you'll ever have. 938-1200. That second week is starting to fill up rapidly. Week number one already completed. You can make that call right away. 215-938. 1200. We had the 10th anniversary Dream Week reunion a couple weeks ago, and some of those guys are going to be out here playing a game here on the turf tomorrow. That should be a game for the ages. <laughs> kind of fun. I know Don Cannon is coming out here to play tomorrow, and a lot of other guys. In fact, I think I got to come out and watch this. Yep, the year too. Dave Holland's the batter. You see the numbers on Dave, who has been hot offensively and playing much, much better defensively. Out away, out of play, back behind home plate. Holland's lifetime off Naples, 263 with a run batted in. Holland's in his last 12 games has two homers, 12 runs batted in, and there you see the number, a 370 clip for him. Strike call on the inside corner. Navajo's with good control early on, even though he walked Dykstra. And so many people walk Dykstra. You can tell Navajo has a much better idea tonight than he did the last time we saw him. He does. Three pitches. Fastball, curveball, change. Good moving fastball. It sinks. He'll run it a little bit. Collins tried to check, and yes, says Kerwin Danley. He did. Two balls and two strikes on Hollins with Dalton on deck. Second inning just underway for the Phillies. They trail one nothing. Hollins gets jammed. Is he going to stay in the air long enough? Yes, for Derek White. He comes over and makes the play. Nice play by Nabholtz. Jams Hollins. And White grabs it one away. 
Looked like Collins was going for something away. Really jumped into this. You see how he jumped into that looking for something out over the plate? And the ball came right back in on his fist. Broke his bat as a matter of fact. Darren Dalton, second in the league to Barry Bonds with 86 runs batted in and walks 90. Hit deep but foul right side, way out of play. As he jumped at that one. Here are the RBI leaders in the National League. And you see him right behind Barry Bonds as Dalton had a couple of big games. Start catching up the bonds a little bit. Here's the 0-1. Fastball whistles inside. Dalton off Nabholt's lifetime, one for 15. And as we mentioned, Dykstra just three for 20 off him. So both these guys have a lot of trouble. Nabholt's a deep right field. He didn't have any trouble there. There's his second lifetime hit off Chris Nabholt, and Dalton is smashed. His 21st home run of the year, and we're tied at one. Yeah, that's another $200 to the Child Guidance Center, donated by Chento for that home run. Number 21 by Darren Dalton. On the year, Phillies 116 home runs. Wow. The Dutch Dalton, who never has had much luck with Nabols, finally gets him. Second lifetime hit off him at 16 at bat. There's the pitch, breaking ball, and it comes right back over the center of the plate, belt high, and that's about where he deposited about belt high in the middle of the upper deck somewhere. And Dalton facing. And Dalton ties Barry Bonds for the league lead in. Runs batted in with 87 of them. Here's in Cavillia. The last time Chris Nabholt saw in Cavillia, he hit one off the screen, the foul, fair pole screen, foul pole screen, whatever you want to call it, for a grand slam home. And he's, he's staying away from him. <laughs> and you know the funny part about it, that ball would have gone into the upper deck. But because it hits the foul pole screen, it doesn't count. But that first inning on May the 20th here at the bet. Staying way away from it. He has been so hot lately, too. He's hitting seven out of nine with six homers and 14 RBIs. Has six homers in his last five starts. There's a screen where he hit the grand slammer. That was one of no part of him. Well, I guess not. He wasn't even close to those fastballs. And that was a problem that Nobholtz was having in his last visit to the Met. He just couldn't control the fastball. Had such a great deal of movement on it. He kept running out of the strike zone. He kept getting behind the hitters. And then when he had to take something off it, and throw it for a strike, he was getting hammered. I don't think Alua likes like that approach at all by Nabholz. Chamberlain, the batter, with nine homers. 28 runs batted in. West takes strike one call. Chamberlain has five lifetime hits off Nabholz and 20 at bats. There are the overall numbers on. West Chamberlain, who has been playing quite a bit against left-handers, hitting safely in six out of his last seven at a 409 clip. Pete in Cavillia leads off first. Chamberlain down the right field line. Walker couldn't see it for a while, and now he makes the play in fair territory and fires back, and in Cavillia gets back. It looked like he was having a lot of trouble finding that ball. Sure did. And he caught that ball right under the 330 mark, right at the foul pole. I thought Chamberlain hit it a lot better than it appeared. I think the wind brought it back too, Jay. Uh, something had happened. Watch as Walker goes into the corner. You can see him now. He comes back a little bit. He goes right, right underneath as you can see the ball come back and catches it right under the 330 sign. Well, Walker did a good job of staying with that ball. Walker is a very good outfielder. Kevin Stocker, the batter. First appearance against the Montreal Expos. Stocker hitting safely an 11 out of 13. Move over to first. Kevin batting 417 here at Veterans Stadium. Done an excellent job since coming up. Had to sit out those seven games with an ankle injury. Switch hitter batting 500 right handed, 286 on the left side.
matchup. Moves over to first quite a bit. Boy, what a difference a couple weeks will make in the temperature. Had a gorgeous night, a little bit of a breeze. Last time we were here, the humidity was unbearable. Stocker tries to run his way on, brought on a spinny kick foul. Well, don't get too comfortable because from what we hear by in a few days, it's going to be right back to that again. Oh, thanks for that tidbit yeah. of information. Wonderful. Enjoy this for the night. The flags are really blowing atop the stadium from right to left, and the ball was carrying like crazy to right and right center during batting practice. Very strong wind here tonight. There are those numbers on Kevin Stocker here. Breaking ball miss. You see Stocker trying to bunt his way on with two outs. He has such good feel for the game. He's thinking trying to bunt his way on and get the pitcher out of the way. One ball, two strikes on Stocker. Surprise in this situation, Chris, with two outs. Montreal is holding on in Pavilion. In Pavilion, really not one for stealing. And Stocker likes to go the other way, sometimes swings late. You would think, especially with two strikes and two outs, that they would move the first baseman right off and behind in Pavilion. And he continues to hold him on. And the breaking ball in the dirt, a nice play by Derek Fletcher, two and two. Napoles was sent to Triple-A Ottawa the Lynx after that start on May 20th here. And it started four games down there, one and one. And then they brought him back up, and he's pitched pretty well. In fact, he's won his last two starts for the second time this year. Stocker pops it up shallow left. A loop breaks back, and then comes in. And Royce says scraps it. Phillies are out in the second. They tie the game on Dalton's homer. A run on a hit. No errors. They'll leave one. Through two, a tie ball game. There we were. A jillion miles outside of the hood. The bus got a flat. Got no tag. Homie's got to cut his grass. What's up? Four and a half. Four and a half. Four and a half. Sold. The man's round sales. But he's got no beat. That was there. Uh, Yo, MC Cow Seller. Uh, uh, From 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue to right here in Pennsylvania, people are searching for new choices in health care. Costs are strangling me. Which inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. Seems like you always have to give something up. A health plan that gives people the benefits of an HMO. No one has the right to tell me what doctor I can see. Without asking them to give up their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. Almost now, reports of a legendary two-footed object have been growing. Anything? Nothing. Must be big. You haven't yet seen it. We're getting something. Coming over the hill, sir. Hit the lights, boy! Bigfoot Pizza, the legendary value from Pizza Hut, with two square feet and a tasty new crust you can't get anywhere else, all for $10.99. Okay, folks, let's break it up. Ah! Bigfoot Pizza, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. It's a really good-looking Phillies road jersey, free for kids 14 and under, compliments of Gatorade. When the Phillies play the Mets Sunday, August 15th at 135, get a free new jersey when the Phillies play New York. Call 463-1000. Well, here's the sound that a hanging breaking ball makes when it hits Darren Dalton's bat. That was quick. Quick and tagged. <laughs> kind of like the way you used to hit him in high school. I love the thumb that just wants to see what that feels like. Guys like you could do that. Chris Nabholtz, the batter. 
Navholt's 5 for 36 on the year. There are the numbers on him. Lifetime, he's a 109 hitter with four RBIs. And Schilling misses low. It'll be Navholt's, then the top of the order, Delano DeShields, and Mike Lansing tomorrow night here on Prism. Tune in for Larry Rosen with a pregame at 7. And then the Phillies and the Expos at 7.30. Dennis Martinez and Ben Rivera. Bill Giles and Dennis Mannion, who is the Phillies vice president and director of marketing. And I don't have to tell you who Bill Giles is. It's the Santa Claus in the sky, right? The big guy. Navajo chases a fastball away, strikes out swing. Number two for Schilling went out here in the third inning. By the way, if you just joined us, there's there's Lee Thomas, and the big thing with Lee Thomas is he picked up from the Chicago White Sox today for Jose De Leon, Bobby Thigpen. Thigpen uh, coming into this year over 200 saves, so Thigpen will join the Phillies shortly, and he will be in the bullpen to help Anderson and Mason assist Mitch Williams. Now Bobby Thigpen, now a member of the Philadelphia Phillies, Thigpen, 29 years old. Thigpen has not been closing games the last year and a half for the White Sox as he has not pitched real well and they're hoping that he'll come here and help out. Delano DeShields grounds out for the second time in the ball game. He is 0 for 2. There are two outs. It'll be, it'll be kind of interesting to see how he pitches Chris because Thigpen really has a great sinker and of course some sinker ball pitchers have had problems on this turf but Thigpen an experienced pitcher might be able to utilize the turf to his advantage. Can't do anything but help the Phillies you would think. And Jim Fergosi knows him very well, having managed him with the White Sox. Mike Lansing grounded to Hollins, who made a good play to his right his first time up. And Lansing with the open stance takes ball one outside. Two outs and nobody on. 1-1 one, one ball game in the third. First to three, the Phillies. And they exposed him on Real. Grounded right back to Kirk Schilling off the end of the bat. Schilling fires the first. He got him. Three up to three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. Mills will bat in the bottom of the third. One more time for a visit now to superstar gallery as Larry Rosen visits one of the new three stars in the National League, Marquise Grissom of Montreal. At 26, Marquise Grissom has already established himself as one of the top base stealers in baseball. His speed translates so well to center field where he can do as much damage as he can with the bat. Grissom now is the entire package, but as he moves into the middle years of his career, Grissom is hoping to add more power. In time and experience, I think I can go out and have a little bit more power and swing the bat well. And my speed is always going to be there. That's something that I, I was just born with. And I'm going to try to just have a total all-around game. You know, that's, that's, the, that's the thing that I want to be, a, a total athlete. Somebody like Barry Bunn, so that can throw, run, hit, and, you know, just can do it all. Well, as everybody who follows the Phillies knows, the Phillies are very, very involved in attempting to help strike out that dreaded disease, ALS, which took the life of Lou Gehrig, continues to take the life of a lot of great people. Prior to the game, the official check presentation, $449,082 presented by the Phillies family to the ALS Association, Greater Philadelphia Chapter. And thanks to all of you who were nice enough to come out here and make that such a success a week ago. Monday as we all had a lot of fun out here. We'd like to remind you that on August the 18th on Sports Channel, there will be a one-hour special on that evening. It will begin at 8 o'clock prior to the Phil's Colorado Rockies game that evening. So on August the 18th on Sports Channel at 8 o'clock, tune in, and thanks to everybody who worked so hard to make that such a great night. Boy, that, that was terrific. And talk about some big dollars, $449,000. Wow, that's terrific. Kirk Schilling will lead it off. For the Phillies, Schilling coming off a two-hit ball game. In fact, Schilling is four for his last 11. I don't think even he can believe that. And the pitch to Schill is outside. Kurt is nine for 48 on the air. He has eight sacrifices. And all kidding aside, he is turning into a much better hitter because he works so hard at it, as he does everything. Foul back. Well, you can only help yourself if you can put the bat on the ball a little bit. 
don't need pitchers to hit home runs. What you want to do is just put the bat on the ball, and especially on Astro to repair in the vet, you get the ball on the ground, you got a chance to get a base hit. Showing fouls it off. We'd like to send special birthday wishes along to Dean Oberholzer from Stevens, Pennsylvania. Dean, good friend and a, a guy who uh, participated in Dream Week a number of years ago and had a lot of fun down there. Dean, I hope you're feeling better and happy birthday to you. Keep in touch. Here's the pitch to Schilling. He fouls another one back. We've got happy birthday to Linda Allen, Joseph Welch, South Philadelphia. He's eight. Larry Dovin from Philadelphia. He's 93. So from all of us here at Prism, we wish you very well. And also, happy anniversary to even Joan Vesh, BESH from Minnesota, 35 years. They're right here at the stadium tonight. All the way from Minnesota, huh? Maybe that's Earl. <laughs> Out away, I think it is. Yeah, somebody just forgot the A. It's <laughs> all right. Earl and Joan V E S H from Minnesota, 35 years. And Carol Philippek, we want her to get well. She's from Magnolia, New Jersey. So Carol, please get well. Philly battling Mavholtz, one and two. Looper right field. Here comes Walker. What a play, Larry Walker. He was playing him shallow over near the line. Got a great jump. And Rob Kurt Schilling of a base hit, one of the finest outfielders in the league. Boy, Larry Walker. You said that was the key, Chris. You just said it. He got a great jump. Watch, he's able to come in and gauge it. Then he can make the decision whether he has to dive for the ball or he can catch it around his knees. But Walker, not a fast outfielder, but just has good baseball instinct in getting the jump on the ball. And saw it right there. See those 10 assists Jay mentioned earlier. What a good defensive player he is. Lenny Dykstra walked his first time up and was caught stealing on a strong throw from Fletcher. And the pitch from Navholz outside. Dykstra really locked into the strike zone. One of Lenny's three hits off Navholz is a home run. Takes a strike call. A ball and a strike on Lenny Dykstra. He mentioned his 10 assists already this year, 46 in his career. Good breaking ball. You figure he's only 26 years old. He's already got 46 assists. He's got a heck of a chance to reach 100 with no trouble at all. Yeah, and a lot of teams, you know, when you start throwing the way Walker does now, the teams have a tendency to back off running on him a little bit too, and it gets tougher and tougher to pick him up. One and two to Dykstra. Jammed him with a good fastball. Nabholtz is going to have to cover, and Lenny beat him. The first baseman, Derek White, made a mistake. He got the wandering. And Nabholtz had to get over and cover to shield his throw was late and a base hit for Dykstra. Watch the play by the second baseman to Shields. He throws it underhand and it's got an arc to it. On a play this situation, you just got to throw it like a catcher, bring it straight back to your ear and fire it right at the pitcher's midsection. He threw it underhand. The ball had a little bit of an arc to it. It's almost like he threw him a changeup. Watch Navel says he has to wait for it and slow down. And just as you saw him slow down right there for that fraction of a second, Dykstra was able to pass him and pick up a hit. So Lenny on for two times again already in this ball game. Two straight times. Dyke Duncan with a line drive base set left field. Duncan now is hit an eight straight. He wasted no time after striking out his first time up. He rockets a single to left. Duncan remembers the last time he faced Navos. Navos got ahead of him with a fastball here because he was trying to let Dykstra steal. He goes right after the first pitch on that first pitch fastball and lines it sharply to left. Happy birthday to avid Phillies fan Suzanne Landy. Got a nice note from her. I'd like to wish her a happy birthday tonight. Miguel Moyet, 52 years old today, and he's attending the game. Happy birthday to you, Miguel. Breck hit a fly ball to center fielder Marquise Grissom his first time up. Now the throw is bounces off the glove of Navholz, but Dykstra can't advance as we look at the batting leaders. Now that Galarraga has dropped out of the picture because he doesn't have enough plate appearances. 
think he can get those plate appearances by the end of the year? Depends on when he comes back, Jay. And they, they said they'll do everything they can to get him for him, even if they lead him off. He's out with a sore knee. He would virtually have to play every game. Truck beats a breaking ball foul first base side. I think it's what 502 official plate appearances. 502. That includes walks, sacrifices, and everything. So, yeah. as you said, it's going to take a lot over four mm -hmm. at bat. So it's it would be difficult for Galarraga. So you, you look at John Crucco has a heck of a chance to contend for another batting title, much as he did last year. Navholz is ahead of him 0 and 2 with Hollins on deck. Phillies have Dykstra at second, Duncan at first, and tied at one in the third inning. Stayed off the breaking ball. You know, it's surprising how well the Phillies left hand hitters stay in against left handed pitchers. I've heard several scouts commented over the last couple of weeks of Dykstra, Dalton, Crook, they all hang in there tough against left-handed pitchers. Usually you only see maybe one guy in the ball club. Breaking ball, up. It's a fair ball. Navholtz will tag Crook, and the runners move up with two outs for Hollins. He had trouble staying in on that one. Well, he just took something off of this pitch. You can see Cruck, he started his movement, then tried to kind of slow it down a little bit. He was just way out in front of that breaking ball. Navos must have pulled the string a little bit on that one and not thrown it quite as hard as he's thrown his other ones. Dave Holland is the batter with two runners in scoring position. He got jammed, popped up foul to first his initial at bat this evening. Navholz is going to work from the windup to Hollins, who tires of waiting and steps out. Dalton waits on deck. Darren is homer for the Phillies run of the game. Starts him with a breaking ball and gets it over for a strike. The pitch is on Navholz. Last time, kind of jammed himself on a breaking ball, kind of leaned out looking for something out over the plate. Breaking ball came in on his fist. He couldn't turn on it. And Hollins once again tires of waiting. Dave has a National League's fifth best at bat for RBI ratio, five to four. Seventh in the league in runs and tenth in walks. So Dave Hollins has been very productive knocking in runs this year, and he has a chance to get a couple here. Rips it down the left field line. It is a fair ball into the corner, and he'll get both of them home. Dave Hollins coast in the second with a stand-up double. He has 70 runs batted in on the year, and that ratio just jumped down. Yeah. Yeah. Well, of course, he hit so much better from the right side coming into tonight's contest at 348, as Chris said. But here, it's a fastball up in the strike zone. And normally, right-handers have a little tough time with that. But Holland just jumped all over. You can see it hit about all oh, foot fair at the base of the fence. Collins picks up two more RBIs to give the Phils a 3-1 to one lead here. That's double number 21 for Dave Collins. Darren Dalton the batter with a solo homer his first time up. Those three expos one here in the third inning. Dalton uh, takes a breaking ball low and Cavillia waits on deck. Seems like this has been the way it's been all year for the Phillies, Chris. The guy come up with two outs and deliver a big base hit for him. Yeah, a lot of different people too. Mm -hmm. Dalton takes the breaking ball over for a strike. Good pitch by Navholtz. A ball and a strike. Phillies have two runs in the inning with two outs. And you see Dalton's home run totals from 87 through 91. And look what he's done the last couple of years. Hitting number 21 here tonight. Off the end of the bat to short. Lansing let it go right under his glove in the center field. Collins is going to score, and the Phillies have another run and lead it 4-1 to one on what probably will be an error on Lansing. 
Well, Lansing on the year 19 errors. We told you earlier that Cordero, as we see this one, as Lansing comes right in, tries to pick it up. It might have hit the dirt part of second base and took no hop. They give Lansing an error, which is his 20th on the year. Cordero, their rookie, 27 errors. So this has been one of the biggest problems that has plagued the Expos is their shortstop and their inconsistent ability to be able to make the play out there. Error on Lansing, the shortstop, no RBI for Dalton, but the Phillies get another run and lead it by three as they've had a three-run third. And here is Incavillia walk on four pitches his first time up as Napoli just stayed away from him. Well, that's a lucky break for the Phillies there. That's got to be an out. Well, keeps the inning alive, gets mm -hmm. him another run, and gives Incavillia a shot, 1-0. Oh. Inky on a home run tear as Felipe Alou looks on. Boys, boys is deep and left. Incavillia nubs one towards third, and it will go foul. Marquise Grissom plays almost everybody pretty shallow in center field. But Moises Alou is really deep in left. There's Grissom. Can't get much deeper. Look at the left fielder. Well, you got to figure if Incavilla is going to get a pitch and pull it. Very seldom does he ever get jammed and hit a little bloop to left field. His bloops go to right field down the line, maybe right center. So if he does hit one hard it's going to be hit well into left field somewhere so Lou can afford to play maybe three or four steps closer to the outfield fence. Well, he's in the spot where if you hit it over his head it's trouble for him. <laughs> There's Dalton on at first base. Two outs in the inning all the runs have scored in this inning with two outs. Three of them. Cavillia stays off of breaking. We tell he's swinging well again. Uh -huh. Staying off that kind of pitch. He was chasing that stuff for a while. Well, he was chasing the breaking ball down and in, and then going again up against the fastball. It was running away from. Him. He couldn't get on top. Well, you're right. His batting eye is back. It seems. That holes continues to nibble with him and gets behind three and one. Chamberlain on deck. If he throws him a three-one fastball. He might not. Well, this is a situation as a hitter. You can just sit in the batter's box and pick your spot and your location, whatever you want to look for, because you got another strike. You can look middle of the plate in, middle of the plate away, up, down, in, out. It's a breaking ball sign. And he checks on it, holds, and Nabholtz, to his credit, gets it over. Three and two. That was a good pitch by Nabholtz. But in that situation, if Incavillo is looking fastball, why swing at the breaking ball? He still has another strike. Will not challenge out Incavilia, at least not in the first two at bats tonight. There goes Dalton. Pitch is popped up. Shallow right field. Looks like a changeup. Here comes Walker in. He grabs it, and that'll do it. Phillies with three runs in the inning, and they lead it by a score of four to one after three. just isn't good enough. Yeah, it looks like you got a new pride and joy. Well, it's not exactly new, but it's new to me. And I see you're putting in super premium. You bet. I saved every dollar I made for two years to buy this, so I'm giving it nothing but the best. Nice car. <laughs> see what I mean? So when good just isn't good enough for you, experience our best. Fly with the new superpower, Zitgo. The Phillies will be loaded for bear when they play Sandberg and the Cubs Monday, September 6th at 7.05 and Tuesday through Thursday, September 7th, 8th, and 9th, all at 7.35.
Then they'll try to send the Astros into space Friday, September 10th at 7.35, Saturday the 11th at 7.05, and Sunday the 12th at 1.35 when kids 14 and under get a free backpack. Call 463-1000. Uh, back here at Veterans Stadium, Chris Wheeler with Gary Maddox and some special guests. I know the people are used to pearls from us at this time, but these are my <laughs> two babies right here. And Ashley, why don't this is Ashley and this is Lauren. Why don't you tell them what promise I made to you? My dad promised because I went to summer school, and if I did good, he would promise that I would be on TV. <laughs> and not only did she do well, she got plenty of awards so she did excellent and we're very proud of her and this is lauren right over here lauren what is it you like about school well i like reading and doing math and i like writing in my journal a lot okay well good I, you guys are on so say hi to everybody and i'll see you later okay <laughs> that's great marquise grissom is going to lead it off and we'll get gary back to work here in a minute as Sandra takes the kids out, Grissom hits a fly ball to center field, and Schilling, who doesn't get Grissom out very often, has to be happy about that as Marquise flies out to center. One away. That was fun. Yeah, that, man, and I want to thank Larry Rosen for allowing my kids to come on here. You know, it was, uh, it's great. They, they get a big kick out of it, and I like to reward them when they do things well, so they got a real kick out of that. Right. Nice to see Sandra again, too. She looks as lovely as always. Your beautiful wife. Gary, Larry Walker fouls one to Louise Poolholz first. All right. <laughs> they practice that all day? Well, no, not really. And they came in. They just got here just in time for, uh, to go on, so we didn't have a time to, to rehearse anything. But they've been bugging me about when we're going on TV. Did you take it? Yeah. Good. Good. They can go home and see themselves. Huh? It's the Walker good fastball and a swing and a miss by Schilling. Schilling tonight has not walked anybody. He has struck out two and throwing very well. Boy, and I tell you, Walker was not even close on that pitch. He reared back and fired that. Larry Walker. Another good fastball and a late swing and a foul out of play. You know, and as I see more and more of Walker in the outfield for the Montreal Expos, I think they're one of the tops in the league. Walker, the play he made on Schilling's fly ball. I mean, as a right fielder, you can't let that pitcher hit the ball in front of you, and he did a good job of playing that. Off-speed pitch after all those fastballs, and he swings and fouls it. Dalton catches it. Strikeout number three. Well, Walker, after swinging and missing at this pitch, and it's out of the strike zone. Good movement there. He starts shaking his head because this guy is overpowering tonight. Moises Alou, the batter, he looped one in front of Chamberlain. It got by him to the wall, and then he wound up at third with a triple and scored on Fletcher's ground out for the Montreal run in the second inning. Phil's lead at four to one. Hard ground ball and a base hit to left field by Alou. Moises Alou gets his second straight hit of the game. And now they've got him trapped off first on the throw back when he slipped, and he's out. And he's looking at his ankle as if he might have hurt his ankle. Well, and one thing we know, it was uh, he was trying to be aggressive out there. So we'll check that out for you. Here's just Cavillia throwing behind him. Well, I don't know if he was throwing behind him on purpose, but he thought Cavillia was going to lob the ball in the second base. And it came over the second baseman's head, and John Cruck was right there. No runs, one hit. No errors, and nobody left. 4 1 fills. RCA 52 inch projection screen home theater. It's bigger and brighter than almost anything out there. RCA home theater products available at all American appliance stores throughout Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and Delaware. Uh, Ryback is an ex seal. Expert in martial arts. Explosives. Stand fast! Weapons and tactics. I also cook. The Nimitz is tracking two tomahawks just launched from the Missouri. Where are they headed? Honolulu. Happy trails. Steven Seagal. I know you, don't I? Tommy Lee Jones. It's been a long time. Under Siege. Darren Dalton, Madonna, Lenny Dykstra, Gina Davis, John Crutt. 
Rosie O'Donnell, Jim Fregosi, Tom Hanks, the Phillies, and the Peaches. The hottest teams in baseball, two teams in a league of their own, and only one channel's got them both, Prism. Whether it's at the vet or on the silver screen, it's the most exciting baseball action of the summer. From your baseball crazy friends at Prism, the only place to be for the summer of 93. Come on out on Thursday for business person special number four. It'll begin at 12:35. We'll have one more coming up later on. This day's compliments of Mellon PSFS. Call 463-1000. Stop by the Center City Ticket Office. Mellon PSFS brought in chestnuts. Tommy Green will come off the disabled list and pitch that game on Thursday. Here's yeah. Chamberlain followed by Stocker and Chilling. Well, you know Tommy Green's going to get his shot against these Expos, right? <laughs> They're going to gonna find a way to get him in there against the Expos. Well, he's making sure that Tommy Green is healthy and he's raring to go right now. Chamberlain fly to right his first time up. Get the ball pretty good to right field also up against the wall. Walker a nice catch. You look at the wind brought it back. Yeah and you can look at the flags and see at the time they were blowing uh, in the direction that means it was going the ball back towards the field. Base hit West Chamberlain. Chamberlain picks up the Phillies' fifth hit of the ball game. Wes, the leadoff base runner here in the fourth for Stalker. This ball is ripped by Wes. I mean, right back up the middle. No question about it. But Napoltz has just made, he's made some good pitches, and then he's made some bad ones following up. And the thing is, you have to be able to be consistent in order to get a hitter out. Two good pitches in that bat does not make a good uh, pitching performance. You have to be able to finish that hitter off, and it seems like somewhere in that at bat, he's going to give the guy something that he can wail on. West now batting safely seven out of his last eight games at a 400 plus clip. Stocker the batter. Kevin fly to left his first time up. Not a bug situation of course with the pitcher coming up and nobody out. One situation of Stocker can get on. I'd like to uh, ask. <laughs> There's a guy trying to get a hold of me in Lancaster named Bob Thompson. Only he didn't leave me his phone number. As we look at Gil Radius starting to throw, he pitched here earlier in the year. So if anybody can get a hold of Bob Thompson out in Lancaster as he's watching the game, call me tomorrow and leave me your phone number. <laughs> I don't know how else to get the guy's number. <laughs> No strikes and that holds continues to move over to first quite a bit. I mean if you're in a dugout you say hey you had your chance to get him when he was batting. You know don't waste all day trying to pick the guy off now. Did you say that? Heck yeah. <laughs> Sitting out there struggling you better try and get somebody out at the plate. Stockton fouls it over. I can still see your perch was always right down there on that top step of the dugout you lean there on those towels. Oh yeah well I wasn't say I, I wouldn't say it unless I was playing. There it, it is. is. <laughs> In memory of you look at that. You go through a bag of seeds tonight. Uh -huh. Me, okay. Shane Raleigh Kevin Gross in the old days. There they are. I always wondered who cleaned those things up. They were never there the next day. Stocker takes a fastball outside two and one. Kevin takes a look down at Larry Bowen to see if they might put a play on here. Two and one. Phillies do not hit and run very much. There is Bowen with one of those bemused looks of this. And he moves over there again. Five of Navholtz's last seven outings, he's pitched eight plus innings. Well, he's had some uh, shabby defense behind him tonight. White at first base, making that mistake of going after that ball and allowing Lenny Dykstra to get a pace hit. Sure, that was a big play in the inning. And the shortstop lets the ball get under his glove, and next thing you know, it's four to one. Brad has a souvenir there in the third base dugout. I know he's going to give it to a fan or something. Well, looks like it's going home. No way. See there? Brad's going to give it up. <laughs> yes, sir. 
Now he can steal a ball anytime he wants to down there on the field. Two balls, two strikes to Stocker. Ground ball. This could be two. Lansing, two to Shields, two white, and a room service double play ball. Although it looked like Lansing might have bobbled it just slightly. He did. It looked like he wanted to throw it before he got it, but he's close enough really to. Oh, by the time he gets rid of it, he's close enough to go ahead and cross the bag himself. Two outs and nobody on base. There is that baseball still in Brad's possession. Schilling swings and foul tips it held on to by Fletcher. Schilling hit the fly ball to right on which Walker made a terrific play. And Walker once again shallow over towards the line. Marquise Grissom moving over also. There goes another one, but this will go way out of play. And it's 0-2. Phillies with four runs, five hits, no errors, and the Expos with a run on three hits and one costly error. The one error they made that they were charged with, and the one error made by the first baseman, Derek White, on which they were not charged with an error. St. Louis Cardinals are playing in Pittsburgh tonight. They're in the middle of a four-game series. Cardinals won last night. Phillies and the Cardinals are now even in games play. You know, the, thing, the team is chasing you, Chris. They definitely looked at the scoreboard. And when you're ahead, you take a little peek out of the corner of your eye. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left. We're through 4-4-1, four, four, Phillies. <laughs> Yesterday's 96 downtown. Precious as the very air we breathe. It's called freedom. And it's what inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice, a health plan that offers people the low costs of an HMO without asking them to give up what they value most, their freedom. Personal choice, the health plan that controls costs, not people. somebody's day. Well, you should have seen the light bulb some guy just gave a girl down in the stands. They just had one of those uh, uh, engagements that they just shot on Panavision and they zoomed in on that ring. Woo. I'm telling you. That's good for what? A couple of weeks? <laughs> <laughs> what is that young thing? <laughs> what is that good for? I don't know, but that was some ring. <laughs> the kid, I got a grown out of the crowd like a grand slam. 50 total pitches for Schiller. Darren Fletcher, the batter, and he pops it up playable in the infield. Who wants it? Crock, Hollins. Schiller just getting out of the way. Crock will grab it, one away. X3 telecast coming up here. Two of them for you on Prism tomorrow at 7.30. And then the business person special Thursday at 12.30. And then on PHL 17, Friday night at 7.30. Happy birthday to Belated to Debbie Davis. And a nice 
nice letter from great Phillies fan in Trenton, New Jersey. Helen Suchka here from her a lot, so happy birthday to Debbie. Another pop-up. Duncan says he'll get this one. And Mariano squeezes it. Two outs. And Kirk Schilling is throwing as hard as he is right now, Chris. You really have to stay off of that high fastball. We saw a Lou get a base hit on one, but other than that, these guys are just popping that ball up. You've got to really make them throw strikes, get the ball down in the strike zone. And yeah, his ball really has movement up right. tonight. That pitches up. The one Fletcher swung at was also up. Good fastball down on the inside corner. This is Derek White, a rookie, playing at first base. Grounded the second his first time up. And Schilling got him out by pitching him inside. Really jammed him to get the ball to second base. Oh, like that. There's another one. Stocker will have to hurry. He runs fairly well and throws him out. Strong inning for Schilling. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. Bills lead by four to one as we head to the bottom of the fifth. What if someone were to design a car about the size of a Ford Taurus outside, but with more room for people than Taurus or Toyota Camry inside? Someone did. What if someone were to design a car with safety features Taurus and Camry don't give you, like both driver and passenger side airbags standard, or an available integrated child safety seat? Someone did. And what if a prestigious magazine were to name this car Automobile of the Year? One of them did. Dodge Intrepid. This changes everything. The metal cylinder is secured and turned in a counterclockwise motion, causing the internal rating to rise and disengage. It's easy to make something as simple as opening a jar complex. The challenge is making the complex simple. But that's what we do at Bell Atlantic Mobile. We take cutting edge technology and place it comfortably in your hands. Bell Atlantic Mobile. Advanced technology and people who make it mean something. When my doctor said to start exercising, I knew I wasn't uh, 25 anymore. And that's when I called Bill, my nationwide insurance agent. Jim had some questions, so we did a nationwide care review. We talked about his financial plan, uh, life insurance, disability coverage, even retirement. Yeah, we covered everything. It turns out Jim was okay just the way he was. Insurance-wise, right? Uh, right. The care review from Nationwide, because things change. By Nationwide Insurance, Nationwide is on your side. Your Nationwide agent in Exton is Frank Imperato. On Sunday, August the 15th at 1.35, the Phillies and the New York Mets, a brand new gift for children 14 and under, a gray shirt. Looks just like the Phillies road jersey. Compliments of Gatorade. It is a must for all kids. A brand new item. So remember that Sunday, August the 15th, that'll be this weekend when the New York Mets come to town. Double switch right now for the Montreal Expos. John Vanderwall will come in and play first base at bat ninth. And the new pitcher is the right-hander Gil Heredia, who the Phillies saw early in the season as a starting pitcher. Heredia used to be in the San Francisco organization. Triple A was eight and four with an earned run average of 2.98 in 16 games. All of them starts. They brought him back on July the 27th. Facing Lenny Dykstra. Dykstra one for one tonight with a run scored and a walk. Lenny a ground ball scooped up by Delano De Shields throws him out one away here in the fifth inning. A disappointing outing for Chris Nabholz tonight as he just goes four. Here's Lenny Dykstra. Pitch up, a very rare at bat. Well, he'll chase the ball out of the strike zone. Probably a new pitcher guy he's not familiar with. Uh, but Lenny Dykstra normally will work that pitcher. And what they say, he averages five pitches per at bat. It's amazing. Yeah, he not only makes them work, he lets the guys on the bench see what the guy features. You know, and that's just a matter of confidence there. There's guys in your old haunt right there. No, no. You only get there as you get older towards the end of your career. <laughs> Dunk it. And Barry throws him out. So Aradia comes in and gets two up and two down. Or else you're stationed down there preparing for your career as an analyst later on, studying the game. Yeah. 
you're sitting down there and you're in the prime of your career, you're not a very happy camper. <laughs> you, know, God, you want to be playing when you're in the prime of your career. Well, there's one right there. Mickey Morandini, Kim Baptiste, Todd Pratt, they all want to be playing. Question. John Crook, the batter, he is 0 for 2 tonight. And a radius for his pitches outside. Goes a little and he has just enough room at the warning track. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We are through five. The Bills lead it four to one. This is your world. Genuine and true. Working together in all that you do. And you're giving it your best. Proud to be a bug. Bug riser. Proud to be a bug. Did you know Texaco puts System 3 in every grade of gasoline? System 3 gets high marks in every grade, which is a lot better than I ever did. My dad says Texaco puts System 3 in every grade. I'm in the fourth grade. Of course! That's why I always fill up with System 3. <laughs> what do I look like? Don't say it. Visit your Texaco station. I can get the tires rotated, the car lubed, and still get home in time for the game. Mow the lawn. For unbeatable System 3 gasolines and so much more. Mow the lawn. Mow the lawn. There are lots of ways to have fun at a baseball game besides the game. Now, the game. The Phillies give Colorado a Rocky Mountain low Monday, August 23rd, and Tuesday the 24th at 7.35, and Wednesday the 25th at 1235 in a business person special. Then Cincinnati turns red Friday, August 27th at 7.35, Saturday the 28th at 7.05, and Sunday the 29th at 1.35 when kids get a baseball jacket free. Call 463-1000. At the end of the month of August, the Cincinnati Reds are coming to town. And on Sunday, the 29th, it'll be Jacket Day. Great-looking warm-up jacket for all fans. 14 and under, a blue pullover with the Phillies logo on the front and back. And it's compliments of our good friends at Acme and Kraft. Just call 463-1000 for your tickets. Stop by any one of the many local Ticketmaster locations. John Vanderwall getting his first at bat of the night. Vanderwall coming in in the double switch. He has started... 25 games at first base this year for Montreal. What a question I ask is why didn't he start tonight against a right-hander tough like Schilling? You know, only Philippe knows the reason for that, I guess. Looking at the kid. He got jammed twice, did Derek? Yeah, I mean, you're looking at the kid, but you are uh, you come in here saying, hey, we need to win three ball games uh, to stay in the race. Outside, happy birthday tonight to Louise Tobin, the mother of Eric Tobin, who works in the Phil's sales office has been of that Lee Tobin <laughs> from the Larry Shanks department hey man and Lee takes good care of me whenever we're on the road or anything like that Lee's that's my girl <laughs> that's my girl does a good job in that PR she department does. she's one of your protege I know that oh good play Hollins is flowing very well again Throws him out one away on a short hop. His throws in about the last 10 days have really gotten uh, on target the way that he wants him, and he's not embarrassing himself anymore. Vanderwall here, this is why you need a good left hander in there against Schilling. I mean, just does not try to do too much with it, go the other way, and hits a shot. Oh, he's right there, doesn't have to move, just play the ball. I know this year will go for two tonight with a couple of ground outs. But I know Phillies are used to seeing him on base a lot. Chris, I mean, we'll really turn it around for, for Hollins over there at third base. Anything in particular? He says he thinks he's healthy. You know, his hand, he had a cut right in the middle of his hand for that operation. And you see, Delano almost went to play for Rolly Massimino one time. And he just feels that he got into some bad hobbit, habits when he had the sore hand. And he's back to throwing okay again. And he's also, in my opinion, squaring up the first base more than, you know, he was opening up so much that the ball was sailing a lot. There's no question his confidence is there. Exactly. 
Well, those balls, when you're firing them down the right field line, can take that confidence away. Speaking of confidence, Kirk Schilling, he has his working tonight. I've seen him even take something off of his fastball. He's sinking him a little bit away when he had when he wants to. Kirk Schilling is a firm believer, Gary, when you talk pitching with him, that you have to change speeds effectively in this league to win. He's very much into that philosophy. Mm. As he did again there. Well, see, that's what I mean. He took something off of that. And the shields just ended up waving it. That ball kind of just dove at the end, tailed away from him. Might have been a fork ball. Look at that. It is. That's a fork ball. He's been throwing more and more of them lately, and he really fools hitters with it. That's the importance of getting out to a lead, you know, where your pitcher feels like, hey, he can go out there and throw that pitch. Otherwise, a tight ball game, he's going to go with, with his best pitch, his fastball and slider. Mike Lansing bounces up there. Birthday wishes tonight to Nancy Crowley. 20 years plus as a Phillies ticket seller. Stay tuned for Mining the Miners. Ricky Vitalico will be featured by Larry Rosen. Hard shot right at Hollins. We're bragging on him, and he makes another good throw to first. Three up and three down in the six. No runs, no hits, no errors. And nobody left on base. There's your scores. We go to the bottom of the sixth inning. Time now for the as advertised mining the miners as Larry Rosen reports on the remarkable progress of the closer for the double A Phillies, Ricky Potalico. Phillies closer Ricky Botelico has emerged as one of the best arms in the organization. Consistently throwing his fastball in the low 90s, Botelico has gained control of his off-speed pitch to become one of the top closers in double-A baseball. Botelico was signed in late July 1991 after missing all of the scouts' eyes in the June free agent draft. He says his coach at Central Connecticut State may have had something to do with that. Well, I, I guess it's basically maybe even the school I was at. I mean, I was getting looked at, but I think my college coach wanted me to stay back one more year and come back my senior year, and I really didn't want it. My, uh, my goal was to play professional baseball, so I basically got, got signed in the middle of the summer during summer baseball, and uh, I'm, I'm really happy I did. Mentality of a closer, what do you do? Do you have a little regimen that you go through in the bullpen, or how do you spend the first six innings? Everybody's got their own thing. Well, basically, you try to stay calm for, for the first six, seven innings, and then and then really mentally prepare. you got to mentally prepare yourself, watch the hit, watch every hitter throughout the game, and then come out and just go after the hitters. You know, I'm basically a fastball pitcher, so the hitters are going to see a lot of fastballs against me. So i gotta, I got to concentrate and see where their weaknesses are on the fastball. We'll look at the homestand as it continues with the Expos tomorrow, the business person special on Thursday. Then Big D and the New York Mets come to town. What a sideshow that's been lately. You know, quiet as it's kept, and the Phillies minor league system is starting to perk up a little bit. You can get down there and see some talent nowadays. Uh, I, from what I hear, there's, they're not going to be part of the Florida Instructional League this year. Right, they had it prior to spring training this year in Instructional League. Where was I? You were working at your real job. Man, I usually count on getting down there for, <laughs> for a couple of weeks. I remember. saw some of it uh, while Dream Week was going on, in fact. Dave Howland's a batter. has a big hit in this game. A two-run double to left in the third inning. That's that minor league department headed by Dale Unser. Former teammate of mine. Birthday wishes tonight to Susan Palmer working as a waitress hostess in the Phillies executive dining room. Arbuckle, the new scouting director. The Phillies are hoping they had a good draft this year. And of course, remains to be seen. Uh, play a little while and you find out. I don't know. After what he did for Atlanta, I'll, I'll take my chances. <laughs> Just give me the same philosophy you used in drafting for them. That was the master plan <laughs> when he was hired by Lee Thomas. Hollins takes a radius pitch outside and he walks it. And I think we have to be. Uh, Curious to see how this thick pin deal is going to work out. You know, uh, there's Ray Shore and Lee Thomas right there. 
There's a lot to smile about nowadays. Lee's made some uh, some great moves to help this Phillies team. And like I was saying, finding out how Bobby Thigpen fits around here is going to be quite interesting. Bobby Thigpen, if you're just tuning in, acquired by the Phillies from the Chicago White Sox tonight for Jose De Leon. Dalton has homered, hit a bomb to right center his first time up. There it's 21st of the year, tying him with Bonds with 87 runs batted in. That is if Bonds hadn't had any homers today. Jeff Shaw, the right-hander, Philly saw him earlier this year as a starter, as they did a radio. That gives you some idea of the pitching problems Montreal's had, much like the Phillies went through last year, running a lot of different people out there trying to come up with a rotation, just have not been able to do it all year. 2-0 and now on Dutch. On deck is Incavilia. Phillies beat a radio in a start here on the 23rd of May behind Terry Mulholland 14 to 7. Shortly thereafter he was optioned to Ottawa. But they just brought him back late in July. There's Joe Kerrigan, the Philadelphia native on the bullpen phone. And this is low. Three and one. Aradia is six foot one, two hundred and five pounds. From Tucson, Arizona. Dalton walks a lot. Many of these Phillies players do. And he walks again. Back to back walks issued by Iradia. Yeah. Here's Joe Kerrigan coming out to the mound. And you just have to talk to young players. They, they really get to the point where you want to try and do it all yourself you have to learn to challenge the hitters early in the count so that you can get ahead of them keep your options open as to what pitch you want to throw if you fall behind these guys you cannot afford to nibble especially against the Phillies when they get so many walks but you have to get ahead and then it keeps your options open and you can keep the hitters off balance walks have not been a problem for a radio Gary three walks and 16 strikeouts in the big leagues this year and while he was at Triple A, 26 walks and 66 strikeouts. And Shaw continues to throw. But back-to-back -back walks here after retiring the Phillies in order in the fifth inning, coming in for the starter Chris Napples, charged with the four Phillies runs thus far. He now, you, is walked and flight out. The thing about not giving up walks, that, that's good. But if you're like serving the ball up because you get behind in the count, you know you're going to end up having a higher earned run average and no walks. Barry's going to step on third, fire to first high, and Incadilia slides and beats the play. I think he'd have beaten it anyway. That's just a five unassisted fielder's choice, and Dolph moves the second. There's one out. Dave Holland's really had a chance to knock Barry into the dugout if he wanted to, <laughs> but he got close enough to him to make him throw high to first base. Incadilia going head first. Head first is all right, in my opinion, if you're doing it to avoid a tag. And if you see a high throw like that, it's good to get down if you can. You see Barry come in, tag the bag. Hollins goes right into the bag. And there's the high throw at first base. Chamberlain, Wes is one for two with a single to center, fly ball to right. And he takes a strike call. We are in the bottom of the sixth inning. Chris Willer with Gary Maddox. Jay Johnstone will be back in the seventh. Phil's lead at four to one behind Kurt Schilling. Had some down on him, Chris. <laughs> he swung right over the top of the bottom, fell out of that. To keep the ball low, it looks like it's right at your knees, and then look at it go down. The guy that sinks the ball like that, you want to tell yourself to make it up in the strike zone. But if you haven't seen him enough to really know what he throws, that's the disadvantage you have against facing a pitcher. Radio fastball, breaking ball, and fork ball. Fouls one towards the Expos third base dugout. Dennis Martinez, the veteran right-hander who has been struggling, will pitch here tomorrow. There were rumors he was going to be gone at the trading deadline. Yeah, that's his struggle trying to get out of Montreal, it appears. Pitchers, they got to hate sitting there charting for a start. <laughs> That'd be one of the worst jobs. Chamberlain with another foul back. The count remains on two stocker weights on deck. So charting, he sits down there and records whatever. 
every pitch is thrown to every hitter, the location, the type of pitch. And it's different with different organizations. I know for a while the Phillies had someone that did that for them in the stands. Each team does it differently. That's right, Ken Holtzapel did it at one time. Jack Turner did it for the Phillies. Turner used to coach football out of Germantown Academy. Remember when you used to see the players sitting in the stands doing the charting for the next game. Let's see what they get out of this, if they get anything. Nice play by Lansing, got him. Lansing comes on and gets that big high hopper and bang bangs Chamberlain at first. The runners move up, but there are two outs. You see a big swing, a full swing by Chamberlain. I used to pray for those kind of balls there because I wasn't taking that kind of swing and I could beat those balls out. But Chamberlain, a full swing, still does a good job of getting down the line. Lansing comes in here quickly. I like Kevin Stocker there, and we've seen him do that play a number of times. On the walk, Stocker to load him for Schilling. So the bases are going to be loaded with two outs on walks, one of them intentional. This is a situation for uh, Lewis saying here in the sixth inning, I just can't afford to let that eight hitter hurt me. A lot of managers hate to walk an eight hole hitter, especially with two outs. Down four, down three runs. I don't know if I would walk Kevin Stocker in this situation. Bring my outfielders in, sink it away, and see what happens. And Stocker trots on down to first, and the bases are loaded for Schilling, 0 for 2, a fly ball to right field. Good play by Walker and a strikeout. Well, with only three walks, you don't worry about this pitcher, you know, walking in the winning run. You're not afraid to load the bases for him. Well, he's playing strictly percentages here, walking the eight hole hitter, thinking you've got to be able to get the pitcher out. Even Lenny Dykstra, such a force. Well, with one out, he might not have done it because he has to figure that he faced Dykstra with two outs. He's figuring he's going to get Schilling out. See if the manager's right. Chris Napholz, who went four. Brady is selected by the Giants, ninth round of the June 1987 draft. Chris, did you get his chance to see uh, Randy Reddy at all? Yeah. Pats it foul, looks great. Smiling as always, happy to be in the big leagues. Acquired today by Montreal from Rochester, Baltimore Orioles AAA club. And they sent Frank Bullock out to make room for the guy that the Phillies used to call Spikey. He and John Crook were pretty tight. Well, they had a nice little reunion around the cage, as you can imagine. Can't repeat a lot of it, but it was funny. Chris, I'm going to be out of here pretty soon, but I want to thank you guys again for letting me have my kids on. You're right? welcome. Oh, look out. We, uh, we enjoyed meeting your little girls. That one landed, went right above the Phillies dugout and hit the screen that fronts the box seats. And then bounce back as we look at Hollins on the bench. Chamberlain, Ben Rivera will pitch here tomorrow night against Dennis Martinez. Ben is not charting. Strike three call. So Felipe Alou's strategy plays off as Schilling takes a strike three call, and there are no runs, no hits, no errors, and the Bills will leave him loaded. We are through six, four one. They lead it. This year, Hatcher is. Fletcher off first. Kamenicki's breaking ball. At the inside corner, he's ahead on the count 0 and 2. But Billy Hatcher, after he took those swings, told me one thing he does against Kamenicki is. 1957 on Dodge Caravans, including air conditioning at no extra charge. So cut yourself in for great savings at the 93 model clearance now at your nearest Dodge dealer.
had for a roommate brought a stranger into Allison's life. <laughs> Someone. Isn't it beautiful on you? Who shares. Well, it's kind of fun having a girlfriend again. Someone. Do you guys know when you'll be back? Who cares? Where the hell have you been? Someone who would kill to be her. Single white female. It's a really good-looking baseball jacket. Free for kids 14 and under. Compliments of Acme and Kraft when the Phillies play the Reds Sunday, August 29th at 135. They'll make a racket to get this jacket. Call 463-1000. As we check out the Phillies dugout, the totals on the ball game four, five, and zero oh for the Phillies, one, three, and one for Montreal. And to the heart of the Expos lineup as Todd Pratt looks on, Marquise Grissom, Larry Walker, and Moises Alou, the center fielder, right fielder, left fielder, the finest defensive outfield in the league, and Jay Johnstone rejoins us. Well, they do have a very good defensive outfield. They ain't bad offensively either. Chilly. Thought he had a strike there, called ball one. Grissom has singled and flied to center. Here's Kurt Schilling's line thus far. By the way, I checked the radar gun on Schilling over the past six innings, Chris. 92 miles an hour is his best speed. And he jammed Marquise Grissom, popped him up. Yeah, he's been throwing hard and changing speeds, Jan using his forkball pretty well tonight. Yes, and you don't see him uh, get Grissom out too often, and here he jammed him. And he got him on a fly ball in the fourth inning. So when he's got that good fastball going, then he's able to use his other pitchers pitches and get him over for strikes. He's very tough. And like Phil Feather said, down there on the radar gun, he's averaging around 91, 92 miles an hour, which is getting it up there rather quickly. Larry Walker, the batter. And Walker takes a strike call. He thought it was high and didn't like it. Phil's are very, very happy to report this guy is back tonight. One of the most popular members of the ball club Johnny Padres Phillies missed him on that last trip swing get a miss by Walker looked like his fork ball right there didn't it, it looked like another fork ball he mm -hmm. struck out the, who was it he struck out the shields on a fork ball in the sixth inning Johnny Padres has uh, just had some medication change and he feels real good he said tonight. Walker can run and Duncan got it Nice play by Mariano Duncan to his right. Larry Walker, a plus runner, two outs. Walker, a very fast runner. And what Duncan did is as he got the ball, you can see him kind of shorten up his stride right here, take a real short step. Because a lot of times you'll see Duncan with that right leg extended out a little further, try and get more on his throw. But he realized that Walker, a good runner, so he had to shorten his stride and make a quick throw. Two outs and nobody on base for Moises Alou, two for two tonight with a triple a run scored and a single look at what's happened tonight Schilling really shouldn't have even given up a run because the ball in right really was misplayed into a triple and they wound up scoring a run to the Expos with the infield back and nobody out on a routine ground ball so he has been very very strong tonight who takes it low, 2 and 0. I hate to tell you, but you know this as well as I do. The Phillies have to make a statement against the Montreal Expos and on this home stand. They can't let down. They've got to go out and win at least five games on this home stand. Fouled away. The New York Mets come in next. The Phillies have 50 games remaining, 25 at home, 25 on the road. They have a six-game lead at game time tonight. Six in the loss column. The Cardinals have now caught up to them in games played. The Cardinals had two games to make up. They played them and won them both. Good fastball. It whistles high, though, and it's three and one. He really humped up on that. He did. Phillies know that they play well at home, and with the Expos in town, they, they can't let their guard down. Expos have nothing to lose by trying to beat the Phillies. They want to beat them to get within seven games. And of course, the Mets follow, and they should kind of fatten up a little bit on the Mets. But as Alou takes his pitch down. Walk number one issued by Schilling, and Alou has been on base all three times tonight for Darren Fletcher as we look at Schilling's pitch totals. Good ratio. And just 75 as we have two outs here in the seventh inning. Fletcher hit the ground ball in the second inning that knocked in the one run for Montreal. Darren's 38th on the year, and he has also popped up to Kruk.
grounded right to the second baseman Duncan. Up, throws him out, another good inning for Shelley. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on base. Seventh inning stretch time coming up, Bills four. Trust me, there are just some things you don't want to paint every year. That's why Sean Williams' top of the line super paint has a 20 year warranty. And it's on sale now during the Super Sailor Thon. Interior and exterior super paint is only $16.99. Super Sailor Thon ends August 28th. So hurry. Like I said, there are some things you don't want to paint every year. Now, the Pennsylvania Lottery has two drawings every week for the Cash Five Lump Sum Jackpot. So every week, I want to go this way. two people can hit Cash Five. All the cash, all at once. When you win the Pennsylvania Lottery's Cash Five, you'll get all the cash all at once in one lump sum. It's a lot, but you can handle it. Cash Five. All the cash, all at once. When Bob borrowed a lawnmower, all he got was short grass. When Bob borrowed hedge clippers, all he got was nice shrubs. When Bob borrowed a ladder, all he got was red shutters. When Bob borrowed a hose, all he got was wet. But when Bob borrowed money, he got indispensable banking services. The Mellon PSFS Smart Accounts. The package accounts for people who borrow as well as save. Hi, I'm Dick Vermeil with a Blue Cross Blue Shield health tip. True or false? Exercising on a regular basis can significantly reduce your risk of a heart attack. True. Following a regular exercise program can lower your risk of a heart attack by as much as 45%. Treat yourself to a healthy walk. Hey, it's the final midday, midweek ball game this season, Wednesday, August 25th at 1235. The Phillies against the Rockies. Phillies pitching staff will be out there battling those Rockies. Compliments of Mellon PSFS. And don't forget, it's the last chance to see the Rockies at the vet this year. So make your plans to come out now and order your tickets very easy by phone. Just call 463-1000 or stop by the vet ticket office. There you see the new Expo pitcher Jeff Shaw. There are his numbers. Shaw, 26 years old. Actually, he's 27 now. Shaw last year, not a tad bit of season. Colorado Springs as Dykstra fouls this one off. Shaw is in the uh, was in the Cleveland organization. He, he came to camp as a non-roster player with them this year. Last year at Cleveland was 0-1 with an 8-2-2 ERA, but mostly at Colorado Springs as Jay said. And he had a good spring for them. He didn't make the ball club in a, in a move that they had to make right before spring training ended. And then they brought Shaw up. Philly saw him as a starter in a game at Montreal. Thanks for take strike two call. Lenny tonight is one for two with a run scored. Phillies beat Shaw behind Terry Mulholland. 10 to 3 at Montreal on June the 14th. Expos are 4 and 3 against the Phillies this year. 2 and 2 here and 2 and 1 at the Big O. Dykstra hits another one. Foul first base side. It'll be Dykstra, Duncan, and Cruck here in the seventh inning. Shaw pretty much a fastball that sinks. He's got a slider and a split finger fastball. He'll use that to change speeds. And on Dykstra, he'll try and keep the slider in on him and go away with a fastball. The sinker down and away. Outside, two and two. Jeff Shaw is six foot two, he's one hundred and eighty five pounds, born in Washington Courthouse, Ohio. Where he still makes his home. He is now 27 years of age. Is that a city or was that the courthouse? <laughs> Whatever it is, he liked the place because he's still there. <laughs> Fly ball, shallow center field. To his right goes Marquise Grissom, who waits. 
and Lenny Dykes is retired. One out here in the seventh inning. That'll bring up Duncan. One for three. Mariano has extended his hitting streak to eight straight. It's Mike Williams getting a little work down the bullpen. Did they give any indication today when Bobby Thigpen will join the Phillies? They have not. I don't know. I, I didn't hear anything a little while ago when I was in the press box with Larry Shank. And, what, what, what will happen is they're having a press conference after the game where Lee Thomas will be attending it, and I'm sure Lee will have some word on that. Uh -huh. Kerwin Danley says no, one ball and no strikes. There is Bill Giles, Ed Wade, Lee Thomas, and Ray Shore. Thomas's box. I guess that's there are. <laughs> There's the fanatic. <laughs> Can't miss him. In the skies of that big bulky green outfit is Dave Raymond. Looks like he's having a little bit of nachos. He's having a good year as always. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the Phillies have won 70 games this year. And if you think it was grim last year, folks, they won 70 games all of last year. So if they can win the ball game tonight, they surpassed last year. Yeah. You know, what's the date today? August 10th. August 10th. It's taken August 10th finally for a Philadelphia writer to write a nice article about Jim Fergosi in the paper. Bill Lyons and the Philadelphia Inquirer actually wrote a complimentary article on the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies, Jim Fergosi. Somebody's finally realized that all the patience that Jim Fergosi has shown this year is finally paying off. Something that Chris has been talking about since day one. And there's Jim Fergosi there. And even when the Phillies had that big 10-11 game lead and the fall are down to five, he never lost that patience. Duncan with a base hit. Mariano's second hit of the game. Hit number six for the Phillies in their first off. Jeff Shaw. Yeah, that was a nice count with Bill Lyon right today. Bill Lyon was on the trip with the Phillies to Atlanta and Florida and spent, spent some time with Fergosi. Well, I mean, if you read the article or, or if you get a chance to read the article, please read it. It gives you an idea a little bit about the inside of the man and it tells you, you know, why he does certain things. Well, he does things his own way, and he yes. really doesn't care what anybody else does. No. He's got one concern, and that's and that's winning a pennant in Philadelphia. Speaking of Jim Fergosi, his lovely wife is in the back of the booth right now, along with Bonnie Vukovic. That was almost like on cue. <laughs> yeah, I did not see them there. I Welcome, know. girls. <laughs> Tony Fergosi and Bonnie Vukovic. Well, it's just, you know, you have mentioned a number of times. It's just unfortunate that uh, you know, a lot of people look for negativism. There's and, Joni. Um, as we see Joni Fergosi coming down to our favorite cameraman, Aldo, the only one that can wear a green shirt like that. Hi, Joni. <laughs> Brock swings and misses. How are you? <laughs> How, how's your husband at home now? Is he, uh, is he having a good time? Miserable? <laughs> We don't have Jody on Mike. <laughs> There's Bonnie Vukovic's track. Well, we're surrounded by loveliness right now. <laughs> Talk about some roses and a couple of thorns. Grounded to a Vanderwall. He bobbles it, covering his shot. Crock is retired. There are two outs in the inning. Did and you moving to second is Mariano Duncan. Did you get a chance to read the article today about your husband, Joni? She shakes her head yes. So we will. We will. <laughs> nice to see you guys. Thank you, Jody. Nice to see you. Bye. <laughs> what a tough job, huh? I have to tell you, she kisses better than you do, Parker. <laughs> is one for two tonight. There's a broken bat base hit right field. Duncan will score. Hollins is going to test Walker who bobbles it and he is 
safe at second base. Dave Hollins with three runs batted in the night, and the Phils lead it five to one here in the seventh inning. Something that we've talked about all season long has just not been one of the Phillies. It's been the entire ball club here with two outs, a runner in scoring position, and another Philly batter delivers a key hit to drive in a run. And that's why this team is in first place by six games coming into tonight because they've all contributed in key situations as Hollins just did then. Dave Hollins with 71 runs batted in. And here comes a guy with 87. Darren Dalton has a home run tonight. And takes a pitch from Shaw over for a strike. Double all the way for Dave Hollins. The second double of the game is 22nd of the year. Two is Darren Dalton this year off Jeff Shaw. When the Phillies were in Montreal to play the Expos, Collins was on the disabled list. No balls and two strikes to Dalton. Low and outside. One and two. And Camellia waits on deck. Phillies now with seven hits in the game and lead it five to one behind Kurt Schilling. There's your totals. Two balls and two strikes, two outs in the inning. And the Phils have a run in. Fanatic trying to help things out. Yeah, putting the curse on the pitcher. Oh, did he have a rip at that? Might want to stay away from the middle of the plate on this pitch. After that swing, two and two on golf. That pitch might have been a little up in the strike zone. We see Dave Raymond dressed in that nice form-fitting green costume. Dave needs uh, probably to go on that slim fast diet just a tad, doesn't he? the bat drops the helmet in front of Gary Darling and walks away Phillies with a run in the inning on two hits no errors they will leave one we're through seven Phils five in the Expos one Introducing a Honda Rarity. Well, it's more of an unusual occurrence. Actually, it's never happened like this before. Definitely out of the ordinary. As a matter of fact, we've never uttered these words before. And though it's our first, at these prices, they're not gonna last. personal in this. I told you he was dangerous. What's it gonna take? Me in a body bag? And anything I seem to do makes it worse. I got a cop who wants my wife. Stay here and lock the door. Do it! <gasps> Some exuberant fans waving to Aldo up here in the booth. And there's your summary of the ball game as the Phillies lead it five to one. Kurt Schilling seven powerful innings thus far. Darren Dalton with a homer. Dave Hollins has knocked in three with a couple of doubles. We move to the eighth inning. Sean Berry will lead it off, and then Lou Frazier, a switch hitter, will bat for the pitcher Shaw, and then to John Vanderwall, a left-handed hitter, batting in the nine hole. Very California boy right out of Torrance. 
That's 10 miles southeast of Los Angeles. Chile starts Barry with a fastball for a strike. As we look at the pinch hitter Lou Frazier on deck. There he is. Expos will need a new pitcher as they will go to their fourth pitcher in the eighth inning. And it's Tim Scott, the big right hander, used to be with Montreal or with uh, San Diego. See the numbers on Schilling as he has pitched a lot of innings lately after having that little lull he was in. And he gets another strikeout, number five, as the batter Barry didn't like it. Schilling hasn't lost much. Here he goes right back for the corner. It looks like it painted the black. Barry thought it was a questionable call, but Schilling pitching this good is going to get those kind of calls. One walk, five strikeouts. Here's Lou Frazier, 313 on the season. You see what he's done as a pinch hitter, a switch hitter. Has very good speed. Stolen 15 bases in 16 attempts. Strike call to him as a right-handed batter, 317. 311 from the left side. You see Holland's way up, respecting his speed, potential for him to bunt. And Schilling just blazes a fastball by him. This is good a fastball, and we've seen Schilling throw in a long time, and he's been throwing hard in his last three or four outings. A little nod from Phil Feathers right behind home plate back in the tunnel there, 92 miles an hour. Ball low, one and two. Phillies play Frazier as an opposite field hitter. Shift Dykstra well over towards left center. Holland's now back at third with two strikes. Swing and a miss. He just blew him away. Strikeout number six for Schilling. It looks like he's getting stronger as the game goes along. Talk about a tough situation coming off the bench, having to face a guy that's thrown a 92 mile an hour fastball. You can see that Frazier swung right underneath it, really kind of behind on that. And that's what happens when you sit around for seven innings and have to come in and face a 92 mile an hour fastball. Vanderwall came in the game at a double switch when Navholtz left, and he hit a hard ground ball to Hollins this one time up. Dave threw him out. Two outs, nobody on in the eighth inning. <laughs> Broke at bat and Stocker is right there as Schilling breaks another bat. In the inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We're going to the bottom of the eighth. Bills lead it by four. Save now on every number one selling Ford at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. It's Ford's factory authorized clearance. Now get a double rebate on America's number one selling car, Ford Taurus. That's 500 cash back plus 500 clearance bonus for a total clearance cash back of $1,000. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer today. See your Ford dealer today. Get behind the wheel and turn the key. Hurry. Ford's factory authorized clearance ends soon. Do Texaco Food Marts really have everything? Oh, they have gum, cheese, candy. Many reasons I come to Texaco. Chips, cereals, nice people. There are many, 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 many reasons. You want it, they got it. If they don't have it, you don't need it. Isn't that candy that pulls product out? Did I skip something? Visit your Texaco station and Food Mart for unbeatable System 3 gasoline. Pop comes here for System 3, and I come here for Pop. Right, Mom? And just about everything else. I'd recommend it to anybody, and I would too. Columbia Pictures would like to take you out to the ball game for an all-star comedy. They'll pay you $75 a week. We only make 30 at the dairy. Well, then, this would be more, wouldn't it? See how it works is, the train moves, not the station. <laughs> There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. My uniform bursts open, and oops, my bosoms come flying out. You think there are men in this country who ain't seen your bosoms? A league of their own. A reminder that this copyright telecast is presented by authority of the Phillies and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form or otherwise used without the express written consent of the Phillies. Montreal Expos go to pitcher number four in this ball game, the big right-hander Tim Scott. There are the numbers on him combined Montreal and San Diego. He came over in that fire sale that the uh, Padres are having this summer, acquired by Montreal on June the 23rd for Archie Sinfraco, who the Phillies saw quite a bit of when the Padres were here and also when the Phillies were out on the coast. 
Tim Scott, six foot two, 205 pounder from Hanford, California. Hanford. Hanford has probably one of the biggest hot stove league banquets in all of Midwestern California. It's uh, somewhere between uh, Fresno and uh, Bakersfield, if that's any help to you people out there. Probably about three hours north of Los Angeles. Good geography, does it, JJ? Well, a lot of the players from the Giants, the Oakland A's, the Angels, the Dodgers always attend that Hanford Hot Stove League banquet because it's used to raise money for the local youth programs all in the uh, valley up there. So that, and they do a terrific job. This kid here, a big kid, as you mentioned, fastball, curveball. Ball moves quite a bit. So be interested to, interesting to see how Incavilia handles the moving, a running fastball in on him. Incavilia, Chamberlain, Stocker, and then Schilling to bat in the eighth inning of a rapidly played game just barely past the two hour mark. Well, he's deserve one of these if it stays this way. They have been playing some long games this year. It could be a big high hopper to the third baseman Sean Berry. He throws Nicky out. So Pete 0 for 3 in the game tonight. One up and one down in the eighth gives us a chance to wish Catherine and Jack Scott of Woodbury, New Jersey. A happy 36th wedding anniversary. Jack Berry involved in activities with the South Jersey baseball old timers and get well wishes to Larry Gimble of Northeast Philadelphia who is recovering from surgery. Hope he feels better real soon. Chamberlain the batter one for three. Nice crowd out here tonight too. Yeah we haven't heard the attendance yet but this game's moving so fast the attendance mm -hmm. has Snap holds kill a radio Jeff Shaw now Tim Scott for Felipe Luz club for chilling all the way for the Phils thus far. Swing and a miss by Chamberlain chilling with his six strikeouts tonight has moved into the top 10 in the league in strikeouts with 117 as we look at the crowd here tonight. He's bidding for his sixth complete game in his third shutout of the year. Uh, not a shutout, his sixth complete game. Chamberlain chases a high fastball, and it's one and two on West. If Schilling were to get that complete game, as you mentioned, it would give the Phillies a total of 19 on the year. Most complete games of any National League team. And the next closest teams are Atlanta and Los Angeles with 12 each. Chamberlain fouls it off. He's had a lot of complete games early in the year. And of course, haven't had that many lately. But Danny Jackson had the one in New York. Tommy Green came very close in Los Angeles and then into that groin for the first time. You're wondering how they're doing in the American League. There's two teams with 17 complete games. That is the California Angels and the Milwaukee Brewers. Down low, two balls and two strikes. And the obvious reason why you see more complete games in the American League is because of the designated hitter rule. Those guys stay out there a lot more, and they sure do. Their ERAs are a lot higher, too. Two balls and two strikes now on Chamberlain. The pitch to West is on the inside corner. He struck him out. Strikeout number one for Scott. Two outs here in the eighth inning. Scott came back with the same pitch. He threw Chamberlain on the previous one. This time you can see the fastball running in. Chamberlain tried to deep the umpire and make it look like it was further inside than it really was. Looked like it might have just caught the corner. The last two complete games pitched by the Phillies, in fact, have been pitched by Danny Jackson. The other one was against the Pirates here on the 31st of July after Danny had had the one in June at New York. Kevin Stocker, the batter, he hits a pop up foul third base side. It'll go out of play. Sean Berry runs out of room. Possibly Jim Eisenreich. He will come in the world. Say possibly he will be coming into the game to play right field. Eisenreich does not get too many nights completely off. He is really a valuable player in this ball club. 
And he will play tomorrow night against Dennis Martinez, the right-hander. Phillies face another left-hander on Thursday. Stocker, Kevin tonight 0 for 2 with an intentional walk, batting at 358. 2 and 1. deck batter, Kurt Schilling. Phillies with one in the second, three in the third, and one in the seventh. By the way, we'll have the Major League scoreboard for you coming up after this half inning as if she's Schilling getting ready to hit. Fouled away again, third base side, and this one will also go out of play. See Barry coming back a little gingerly to the bag after he ran into that iron gate down there. Something like that. That's no. sure. mm. And the count remains two and two on Stocker with two outs and nobody on. Oof, is that close? Full count on Kevin Stocker with a good eye. Three thousand one hundred four announced by Jay McLaughlin here in the press box. Of tickets sold here tonight, Phillies well over two million. And the fans have been so terrific this year. Coming into tonight's ball game, the Philadelphia Phillies fans have attended six hundred and forty-six thousand more of them than they did last year at this time. Stocker swings and misses at a pitch. Down and away from him, he strikes out. Strikeout number two for Scott, who has a perfect beginning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left. We're heading to the ninth, and there's your score. Okay, panel. How can you recognize the genuine yellow pages? Uh, it has a yellow cover. Good. It says New Jersey Bell on the front. Right. Uh, it has more choices than sound. Yes. That's how you call the genuine article. Thank you, gentlemen. Oh, thank you. The genuine New Jersey Bell Yellow Pages. Nine out of ten use it. No other book can match it. A Bell Atlantic Company. a group of 25 or more, we'll give you a great time at a Phillies game. For all the details about a special package for your group at a Phillies game, call 463-5000. Free, I want you to see something, right? She has a gift. Watch this. Are you okay, honey? I just ran! Hey, Rick, it's five of them, man. Yeah, I know. My girl. I never made it with another sergeant before. <laughs> they're back, and they're bringing down the house. Lethal Weapon 3. At the Major League scoreboard, Giants continue to roll. Florida trailing the Cubs. A triple play just turned by the Pittsburgh Pirates to keep that game 2-2. Two two. The triple play in the eighth inning. Mets leading Atlanta and a couple games on the coast. Then the American League, Detroit is going to snap Baltimore's eight-game winning streak, it would appear. Alan Trammell has a three-run homer. And there you see the other scores in the American League as they have a great race going in the American League East right now. But Baltimore looks like they will not win for the ninth straight time. To the ninth inning, top of the order, Delano DeShields, Mike Lansing, and Marquise Grissom to face Schilling, who 
fouls one off the mask of Darren Dalton. It's like getting hit with a punch by oof, Joe Frazier, marvelous Marvin Hagler, Larry Holmes, Jerry Quarry, and Muhammad Ali. Strike two call. The, the Shields tonight is 0 for 3 with a strikeout. He's dipped under the 300 mark. Outside Schilling has walked one and struck out six. He's given up three hits. There is Eisenreich, the new right fielder. Schilling looks like he's starting to rush a little bit. He's still throwing hard. He don't want him to start rushing and try and get it, get it over with too fast. Dalton's usually pretty good at slowing a pitcher down when that happens. Now you see his last complete game win. I mentioned it had been a while. Something blows out there on the field. The line picks it up. One, one thing that has plagued this Montreal team is the fact that when they have runners in scoring position, they just can't seem to pull the trigger to get that base hit to score them. They're ninth in the National League in run score. They're 11th from team batting. And they're 12th in home runs. So even though their three outfielders have over 50 runs batted in each, they just can't score enough runs to win ballgames. That's ripped into the alley in left center. And it Cavillia cuts it off, but he won't get the shields as he bobbled it there. Delino moves into second with a stand-up double. That's the first hit for the Expos since a single by Alou in the fourth inning. And hit number four tonight for Montreal for DeShields, double number 15. DeShields went down and got that pitch. That pitch might have been out of the strike zone. Looked like Chilling made a pretty good pitch on him. Sometimes you have to give the hitter credit. That's what he's getting paid to do is go up there and hit those pitches. And he took a pitch that really wasn't a very good pitch to hit. Got himself a double. Mitch Williams starting to loosen up in the Phillies bullpen. And Mike Lansing, the batter, 0 for 3 with three ground outs. The Shields, a leadoff double in the ninth. 5 1 Phillies lead it. Lansing pop up down the right field line. A long run, Eisenreich. Can he get it? No. Whether he had a shot at that and the fan took it away from him, it's hard to tell. It was not fan interference because they didn't reach out. Let's see if he could have caught this. He's really good on these. Looked like he had a shot at it. No, I just couldn't get his glove over close like enough. It. In case you're wondering, Lansing leads the Expos in grounding into double plays with 11, and the Phillies on the year have turned 86. One ball and one strike now on Lansing. His shields leads off second. Base hit center field. Delano to Shields will be waved. Well, they waved him in, but he just stayed there. Dykstra just lobbed the ball back into second. Jerry Manuel had a late go ahead to the shields and he decided down by four to just stay at third base. I think Manuel wasn't sure what Dykstra was going to do with the ball. Dykstra wanted to keep the runner at first base. Manuel had the hold up sign but you can see Dykstra just kind of lobbed it in by the time Manuel had started to try and get the shields to come in. He had already slowed down couldn't score. Doesn't really make any difference. His run means nothing at this point right now. First time in the ball game that the Expos have had two hits in an inning. Grissom, that is the Shields at third. And Lansing at first, and here's Grissom, one for three. Phillies play the infield at double play depth for a fast runner. And the pitch to Marquise is a strike. Barry Walker waits on deck. He made on Grissom coming right back in. We'll show it to you, but 
Right here, look at this pitch on Grissom. Fastball above the belt, right underneath the hand. Made some great pitches on Grissom, a guy mm -hmm. that has hurt Schilling. So now Walker, the batter. You have to think that if Walker represented the tying run, that Williams would be in the game. But he does not. It's five to one with two on. And Walker grounds one to Cruck. It's a foul ball. Did you notice how easily Cruck just scooped up that hopper? I mean, if you're watching Cruck on that play, the play means nothing. And Cruck just came in. Everybody talks about what a great hitter John Cruck is, but. People fail to realize. Watch how easy he just scoops up this high hopper. Now that really, in most instances, is a very tough play, and he just did it very nonchalantly. He as is he a does, very good first baseman. As he does most things. Yeah, I mean, you know, people always talk about his hitting, never give him credit for his glove. Walker checks on a high fastball. Now Cruck is playing off the runner, Lansing at first. At least he did on that pitch, trying to take a hole, the hole away from Walker. Casey pulls it over there. Kurt Schilling has just delivered his 100th pitch of the evening. Pretty good ratio right there. One walk, six strikeouts. 100 pitches, and you're in the ninth inning. Throwing 65 strikes. So you got a pretty good ball game going. Overthrowing a little bit, I think, in this inning. You know, he's he looks strong. He looks like he's trying to get this thing over with. Mm -hmm. He started to overthrow a little bit, and as a result, he's in some trouble. Two balls and two strikes on him. Oh man! What did he want that? Didn't get it. That would have been a huge pitch. Uh, that pitch looked like it was going to be a, on the corner. I think it ran away just a little bit. You can see Dalton setting up side. You can see how that ball at the last minute just kind of moved a little bit outside. Dalton thinks that's the same pitch he got called out on. Three balls and two strikes to Walker. Had a rip at that and fouled it straight back. Walker wasn't about to let the second one go by. Notice Schilling staying away from Walker's trying to stay away from his power, though Walker does have opposite field power. Walker with kind of an open stance, not as pronounced as John Crooks, but you can see he's got that front foot, his right foot. Oh, maybe six, eight inches behind his back one, but then as the pitch is made, just like John Cruck, he dives back in, turns that front shoulder in to get maximum power and drive out of it. See right there? That one was low, and they're loaded. So now the tying run and the person of Moises Alou comes to home plate. And Fergosi continues to look on. He does not usually bring Williams into these kind of situations unless he really has to because of the potential for walks. So Alou, who has been the best hitter against Schilling tonight, will bat. He is two for two with a walk. On deck is Fletcher. the year is grounded into eight double plays but primarily a little fly ball hitter. This has really turned into a squirmer now all of a sudden. Collins on the line at third Cruck on the line at first. Alou fouls it away one and one. Bay looks on. 57 years old. Had a big league career that was outstanding. Oh, he was a solid player. Over 2,000 hits. 
fly ball right field playable for Eisenreich. Jim comes in. The Shields is going to tag and score. And Eisenreich, as always, slows to the right base and keeps the other two runners where they should be. You don't want to throw that ball home and let runners move up, and Eisenreich won't even be peeked into that. Sacrifice fly, run batted in for a move. Two outs, and it's a 5-2 to two game for Darren Fletcher. Pittsburgh, we're told. Game is 2-2 in the top of the ninth inning. Heck of a time for a rainbow. <laughs> Strike call to Fletcher. Darren tonight is 0-3 for 3 with a run batted in on a ground out. The crowd coming to life now. All 43,000 of them. On deck is Sean Berry, a right-handed batter. Cheering, chilling off for that final strike. Going to try to keep the ball away from Fletcher. Got him. What a job by Kurt Schilling. Complete game pitching performance by Kurt Schilling. Phillies win their 71st game of the year. One more than they won all of last year and beat the Expos in game number one of this three-game series. Be pretty happy about this last pitch, Jay. Watch his reaction. Yeah, watch the power pitch. You talk about a guy getting something on it. Over 90 miles an hour again all night long in the 90, 91, 92 range. There you can see him with a little bit of exuberance. Pitch right around 91 miles an hour. Fletcher went after a pitch that might have been a little bit out of the strike zone. Watch this power fastball. Yeah, that's an appropriate pitch to end the game on. Yep. A power pitcher throws a high fastball. And there goes Kurt Schilling off the mound with his 10th win of the year. And the Bills have a 5-2 win. We'll be back with more after this. Reports of the legendary two-footed object have been growing. Anything? Nothing. It must be big. Even Chet's seen it. We're getting something. Coming over the hill, Hit the lights, boys! Bigfoot. Bigfoot Pizza, the legendary value from Pizza Hut, with two square feet and a tasty new crust you can't get anywhere else, or for ten ninety nine. Okay, folks, let's break it up. Ah! Bigfoot Pizza, the biggest pizza you can get delivered. From 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue to right here in Pennsylvania, people are searching for new choices in health care. Costs are strangling me. Which inspired Independence Blue Cross and Pennsylvania Blue Shield to create the new personal choice. Seems like you always have to give something up. A health plan that gives people the benefits of an HMO. No one has the right to tell me what doctor I can see. Without asking them to give up their freedom. Personal choice. The health plan that controls costs, not people. Upon completing the rear axle of C diagrams, using a 9-inch gripping wrench, tighten the C diagrams and secure the frame extenders to the housing mount. Congratulations, you built a tricycle. While the simplest things can be made complex, the challenge is making the complex simple. But that's what we do at Bell Atlantic Mobile. With straight answers, clear explanations, and with no assembly required. Bell Atlantic Mobile. Advanced technology and people who make it mean something. It's the fourth business person special of the season. Compliments of Mellon PSFS. Thursday, August 12th at 1235 when the Phillies play the Young Explosive Expos. Put some exciting baseball on your calendar. Call 463-1000. Phillies start their sixth game homestand against Montreal and New York on a positive note tonight behind 
Kurt Schilling, who was outstanding. He pitches a complete game his first since June 11th as he beats the Montreal Expos by a score of 5-2. to two. In the ball game, Kurt Schilling walked two and struck out seven. He's the winner. Chris Nabholtz took the loss. And here's him striking out Sean Berry early on. And then the pinch hitter, Lou Frazier, he just blows a fastball right by Frazier. And that, among many other reasons, is why Kurt Schilling tonight is our Texaco star of the game. Schilling, in his fifth effort to win that tenth game, finally gets it, and he is now 10-6. and six. We will be back with more coming up right after these messages. In a game rich with traditions, Sherwin-Williams has created one of its own by preserving and protecting the national shrines of our national pastime. This is the paint of the pros. And it's the choice of millions of fans at home. And while your town may not have a big league ballpark in it, it does have a big league paint store. The pros know. Ask Sherwin-Williams. all year. Now save on every number one selling Ford at your Quality Plus Ford dealer. It's Ford's factory authorized clearance. Save $1,300 on the full size number one selling Ford F-150. Clearance time is the best time to buy. See your Quality Plus Ford dealer during Ford's factory authorized clearance. See your Ford dealer today. Get behind the wheel and turn the key. Hurry. Ford's factory authorized clearance ends soon. It's baseball under the sun when the Phillies try to bury the pesky Montreal Expos live from the vet Thursday afternoon at 12.30 right here on Prism, the home game home of the Phillies. A thousand miles from Beverly Hills in a part of the world where Melrose is but a dim, chlorine-faded version of plastic surgery hell, there's a bunch of young people slogging through torrential rain, drowning themselves in caffeine and soaking up the sound of Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, and Alice in Chains. This guy plays no games. I've got to play this one perfectly. What do your instincts tell you to do? Not to listen to you guys. From Cameron Crowe, the creator of Fast Times at Ridgemont High, and Say Anything comes singles. They're regular people, just looking for a warm, user-friendly body to spend the rest of their days with. Hey, babe. Don't get me sick. Singles, featuring new music by Pearl Jam, Soundgarden, Alice in Chains, and Paul Westerberg. Well, the Phillies trailed in this ball game, one to nothing in the second inning, one out, and Darren Dalton the batter, Jay. The scouts have mentioned how many times the Phillies left-handers stay in against good left-handed pitching, and Dalton right there staying in, and Nobholtz breaking ball out over the plate, and Dalton really tattoos this one out of the park. And that got the Phillies offense going. Dave Hollins would add uh, two doubles, three more RBIs, and the star of the game, though, has to be the great pitching tonight by Kurt Schilling. What a lift he gives the ball club, I guess, starting out this homestand. Well, I draw first blood, but it's a powerful game, as you mentioned, by Schilling. He was on all night. Uh, the uh, Expos could not really muster a rally the entire game against him until the ninth. He had the ball at 91, 92 miles now on, on the gun the whole game. So just a powerful performance by Kurt Schilling tonight. I guess not too many people complain about the complete game tonight. <laughs> well, you know, the Phillies lead all of baseball in that category with 19, so they must be doing something right. It looked like he still had a lot left in the ninth inning. His pitch total was pretty low. I mean, he barely finishes over 100 pitches. Uh, even though he had to struggle a little bit of the night. Well, you brought out something real important. He was so excited about getting this game in and getting the complete game, he started to over pitch. And you can see him trying to hump up, and he was grunting a little bit, trying to throw that fastball. And all Dalton did was went out there and calmed him down a little bit. Say, hey, look, just hit the target. And he got right back and made a couple of good pitches. And, of course, the pitch that ended the game, a powerful pitch, 91 miles an hour to Fletcher, high-rising fastball guy, didn't have a chance. Well, we'll be back at you tomorrow night on Prism. Don't forget, Larry Rosen will be on with the pregame at 7 o'clock, and then we'll have the game for you at 7.30. It'll be Ben Rivera against the veteran right-hander, Dennis Martinez. For my colleagues, Jay Johnstone and Gary Maddox, this is Chris Wheeler. Thanks a lot for watching tonight. Be sure and tune us in tomorrow night, and now stay tuned for Pennant Chase already in progress. Good night.